Discord. 27 things? Jesus. <laughs> it's only 8 minutes. Yeah. So. That's a lot of things that probably aren't going to be, like, super well explained. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, I mean, we'll see what's going yeah. on. Yeah, we'll see. I guess. Uh. Yeah. I'm going to do some hell divers while we're doing this to keep myself awake cuz that's fair. Now that I am home and I am full from eating some cake, I'm a bit sleepy. Oh. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that'll do it. Yep. <clears throat> Got myself a tiramisu. Ooh. I love tiramisu to death, dude. Yeah. That's so nice. As I am not a cake guy, I cannot comment. Uh ah. it is all cake is fine. Like I fair don't enough. prefer it. Um, as long as it's not super frosted, though, you know, like, yeah. if it's really frosted, it just makes me not want to eat it at all. Yeah, that's fair. But, uh... Just need, like, a light icing on it. Yeah, that's that. fine. <clears throat> if even that, exactly. Yeah. Um, hello, Draco Kraken. Sick man here. Probably mostly listening and playing Unicorn Overlord. Okay. What's Unicorn Overlord? I don't know that game. Mm. But cool. I've I've heard the name, but I've never seen it or played yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, this was not what I was expecting. It's a strategy RPG. Oh. Cool. It's for the Switch. Mm. Uh it is an Atlas X Vanillaware. A game, tactical fantasy RPG, blah 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 blah. blah. Key features, yeah, traverse a vibrant world for sure. Uh, assemble units and direct them into exquisitely animated battles. Okay, oh, okay. Heroic deeds and grow renown throughout the five nations. Ooh, maybe there's like an actual system there. Grand That's army that. with over <laughs> sixty unique characters from humans and elves to massive beasts and heavenly angels. Okay. Cool. Okay, cool. That was neat. I hope it's fun. It's everything but PC, sadly. Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> we don't get games on consoles for a while sometimes. It's fine. Mm. It's fine. Um, well, just make sure that I did that. I did. So those. All right. Well, welcome back to Table Talk Discussion and Discourse. I, as always, am your host, Alejo, a.k.a. Great on 95 And I'm the second host tonight, because Aiden's not here, and I'm diving into hell mm -hmm. <laughs> while I listen and watch. Yes, because yes. I'm very sleepy, because I am full of cake. <laughs> yes. Um, <sighs> I, uh... I did a bit of my own gaming while before I started the show and everything, and I played a bit of um, Blood Rain. Uh, oh, okay, nice. That game is fun. I like that game. Nice. Um, it's a little silly. Uh, ah, that's I've, I'm willing to believe it. Yeah, it's a little silly. Just be, it's not even because it's like tonally silly. It's just it's just a silly little game, you know. Mm. Um, I'm I'm currently finally fighting Nazis like on the nice. cover. So, is drinking that the, their blood. Like the original, the original um, Blood Rain. Yes, I have. So both, like, uh, the the remasters of both of the first two games. Okay, they is it like a third person shooter? What is? Yes. Kind of, what is? Okay. Uh, so there it is a third person shooter, but you do have a melee attack that is pretty good. Um, okay. and you get a um pretty early on after you know a little bit into the first level you get a um. A grappling hook that you can pull enemies to you, cool. Um, so that you can drink them or just melee them and stuff. Mm. Um, I feel like drinking Nazis isn't really the best, you know. Well, you know, you just put their blood to better use, you know. I guess uh, so. <laughs> and really, it's just just healing yourself. That's about it, you know. Yeah. Um. Hello, Timothy. How are you doing? Um. But uh, yeah, I played some of that. What else did I do today? I did. I did. Oh, I uh, I rendered uh, episode five of Devils and Dice to see if maybe this time it'll work. I'm gonna try to upload it tonight. Um, okay, that's good. And uh, I saw that I could. YouTube allowed me 
to uh, oh. try to mute um, episode 14, I think it was. Well, that's um, good. Yeah, so it it's it's I think it's literally because 14 and onward had multiple tracks and mm -hmm. so it can actually figure that out. But mm -hmm. um before that it's 9 and 5, those two I need to like go in and actually do shit to cuz they're all on one okay. track. I see. Um and <laughs> so 5 is going to be like weird sounding for some of it. One. If it yeah. if it works, nine will also be that way if it works. So yeah. well, you could at least have like the little interjection, like, "Hey, this is what happened." Yeah, and you know, it, this is what it, happened in that episode. In yeah, if it doesn't work out, I will make just a, a full interjection thing and put it in place of it. Um, mm -hmm. but uh, if it does work, I'll just do a little thing in the beginning of this was a reupload because I had to cut out shit and it's gonna sound mm -hmm. weird, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think uh. 34 as well uh was one of them which also has multiple tracks but it didn't allow me to do it or something and so i'm gonna just render that again without the music in the background and the tabletop uh simulator sounds so okay. all of that is on the way uh finally because i've had some time mm. <laughs> which is nice um doing well how are you guys i'm doing okay i am doing good um Life's a beach that makes you old. That's right, Lux. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Hello. Um, so today, we are going to be talking about a couple of things. The first thing is apparently... Oops, that's the, uh, that's the comments and stuff for later. Uh, apparently, there are 27 things every D&D &D player should experience at least once. I'm. I truly hope that death is one of them. That oh, would yeah, be very I, funny. <laughs> I was literally actually going to say. I think it's going to. One of them is going to be death for sure. Yeah. Um. Because it is. It is something that you should experience. I think. Um, yeah. It sucks, but you should definitely die. Yeah. It. 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 You should kill yourself now. No. <laughs> <laughs> um. But no. It, it. 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 It can raise the stakes, raise the tension, all that kind of stuff. It can really promote. Uh, the feeling of the game to be, you know, more um, realistic in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it matters. Um, so I, I think that's definitely going to be one of them. Um, I have no idea what <laughs> 26 other ones are going to be. Yeah. Um, like, what the hell? So, yeah, it's going to be, it's an eight minute video, eight minute, 20 second video. So we're going to go through them. Maybe we can figure them out uh, in more depth. Uh, cause seeing how they lead to things, um, I, oh, maybe like betrayal of a, uh, a beloved NPC that might be I, one, mm -hmm. um, that could be interesting. Um, cause that can be, that can be very good. Um, how can you come up with 27 though? I mean, it, it really depends. I have no idea. So, yeah. um, it could be things as generic as you fight a, uh, I don't know, a mind flare, you know, or it could be something just like, oh, you like something very specific. Oh, you go to the town and uh, you find that there is a merchant who is selling uh, specifically one gold coin like he's selling it to you. And it's like, well, oh, I don't know why. I, yeah. You know, it's it could be anything. So um, <laughs> we shall see. But um i've never experienced death well you know you should at least mm. once apparently uh so let's say 27 things every D, D party should experience at least once from the fantasy forge here we go all right so if you've ever played D, &D you know that there are just certain things you have to experience it's like the fantasy equivalent of a midlife crisis except maybe like multiple times a session so let's dive into my top picks for the top 27 experiences that every D&D party should experience. Number one, get a quest in a tavern. Ah, yes, where else but in the ambient glow of candlelight, the hum of drunken tales, and the scent of questionable puddles on the floor? Every campaign at least once should start with an ominous figure in a shadowed corner handing out a quest. You think pubs are just for drinking? Think again, because before you know it, you're knee-deep in a goblin den fetching... Is that a severed head? Because nothing says adventure like accepting tasks from tipsy strangers you just met. Your parents would be so proud. Number two... Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you can take it or leave it, I feel. Um, yeah, like, that never really strikes me as something that you must experience. Yeah. It, I guess it's like, the theory is that, oh, it's the classic thing, so exactly. you should do it. Yeah, that's but what I, I mean, thought. 
eh. But not all classics are things that you need to experience, you know? Yeah. Um, it, uh, sure, I guess. Yeah, it's weird. You botch a stealth roll at the worst possible time. You're sneaking past a sleeping dragon, the tension is high, and then, of course, the barbarian trips on an oddly placed banana peel classic it's those i immediately regret my decision moments that are just the chef's kiss in dungeons and dragons for sdms Number okay um in general i would more broadly say uh botching an attempt at something that is very important um because that's something that can lead to uh a misadventure or certain consequences that no one expected um mm. and it could take the story in a very interesting direction though mm -hmm. i you don't have to, obviously. Um, yeah. It's definitely something that, that you can work with, whether you're a player or a DM, you know? Um, but uh, it doesn't have to just be stealth. Mm. Um, <laughs> how about you drop your dice and can't find them? Ah, uh, yeah, there you go. That's a good mm. one. <laughs> I hate that because I actually had that happen with one of my D4s. It just, I was at a, at a friend's house at the time, I uh, rolled my D4, and then uh, after the, the everything was going on, you know, I, I dropped it later on, and it was like, ah, shit, where did that go? And mm. then uh, it never found it, ever. It's gone. Yep. <laughs> it's just lost to the ether. Exactly. Um, I like this guy's avatar. Yeah, it's cool. That's neat. Um, you see an ominous shadowy figure in the corner. Sounds scary. I avoid him. Yep. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't like that guy. I don't want to. Three, adopt a dangerous pet. Be it a displaced baby, owl bear, or a mischievous pseudo dragon, or a strangely affectionate giant spider, every party needs a potentially lethal pet that, let's face it, will probably cause more chaos than the BBEG. You don't care how many eyes or legs they have, it's the murderous creature inside that counts. Okay. Is that swamp thing? Yeah, that was I was literally gonna say, oh look, swamp thing. Um <laughs> looks like Cthulhu in that. He had like fucking face yeah. tentacles. Yeah, he does in in that I think yeah, that show was, like, very short-lived, if I remember ah. right. Well, I mean, it was a Swamp Thing show, right? Yes! <clears throat> and, it... like, Swamp Thing's not super popular, as far as I know? Um, I don't know, honestly. I like Swamp Thing myself, Oh, yeah, no, obviously. there's nothing wrong with him. No, um, but, oh. like, I don't think he's he's in the mainstream enough for him to be supported for at least more than a season, unfortunately. <laughs> You know? Yeah, that's the thing. Um, I like the attempt, and if they had done it probably really well, then and actually marketed it well, then people yeah, probably would have seen it. Come from it. But uh, I honestly, I only know about this after the fact. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate that. And the only reason I even w made the assumption is one, it's got fucking, it's green, it's made of fucking plants, and like, it looks kind of like a you know what they would come up with for a tv version of swamp thing yeah exactly because swamp thing doesn't look like that in the comics no uh he kind of looks like a well, green plant dude he does sometimes that's the thing this this incarnation of swamp thing is one of the designs oh is it oh yeah. okay never mind yeah for sure um 2019 there was a swamp thing uh it was a more horror thing but it looked he was like the man looking swamp thing Rather ah, than okay. the beast looking. This might be from a different show entirely, actually. Could be. Um, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, otherwise. that's not really the point. No. Um, hey, JR Sonic, what's up? Um, Inside that counts. Oh, right. Uh, I was going to say, um, for this as well, the pet thing could be translated as well to just NPCs in general. Um, yeah. Because every NPC is going to be chaotic and it might or might not lead to something hell yeah um in one of my groups one of our npcs was literally uh they the, the party brought them along uh they were just a, a tavern girl who wanted to become more than what she was uh, disney princess nice <laughs> yeah yeah really but uh she had no experience in anything mm -hmm. uh and so uh she was very much in danger all the time uh, <laughs> no experience in anything other than like getting fondled by drunk people. Right, exactly. Um, unfortunately, and mm. uh, and so it was pretty bad uh, for trying to keep her alive. Uh, that was my what, my character died during that arc. <laughs> I oh. remember. <laughs> Did she live? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't because <laughs> of my character, but 
De- definitely lived. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is quickly becoming the list of things I've heard stories of in D&D but never experienced. Yeah. Um, they tried to start a Swamp Thing cartoon in the 90s, but I don't think it went over. Mm. Not that too sounds familiar that. to just- me. He's just not that. He's just not that popular. No, he's it, way cool, but yeah, they don't. I really love his whole connection to like nature as an entity because yeah. it's like I forget what it is. There's a thing that Aquaman is also connected to. It's like the clear or something. Yeah, something. Yeah, and it's like a dimension of nothing but water. Yeah, it's it, and, so, and there's like something with him being a big guardian of uh a lot more than just nature i think it's mm. something maybe more multiversal i'm not sure yeah um, it's some big deal he yeah. and poison ivy actually get on oh yeah of course of course you know that makes sense um maybe i should t- say it and poison ivy true technically yeah he is no longer a man mm. uh my teacher's making me do a design to uh a design to banner for a Oh, for a banner for a dance, and I'm really bad at digital art. Y'all are keeping me from going insane. Well, that's great. I'm glad for it, for uh, us helping you out in that department, mm. then. Uh, hope you can get it done, you know, sooner rather than later, for your own mm. sanity's sake. Um, Swamp Thing is cool, but I don't like him being a, a dude. He should just be a, mo- just be a monster. Why do you mean, like, unthinking, unfeeling? Because I don't I think agree. he probably means the just the character design. Probably. Oh, 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 I gotcha. OK, if that's the case, I would agree with that. I like this design way more. Mm-hmm. Um, swamp things because it's not it's swamp thing, not swamp man. Exactly. Yes. Which would be hilarious. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's uh, swamp, what we're going for here. Swamp things thing is called the green. That's pretty much all I know about it, though. Ah, OK, there you go. It must be that each thing has like a color right is yeah. representative of what it is because the blue the green mm-hmm. yeah anyway uh number four haggle over a single gold no matter how wealthy the party gets there will always be a time when they bicker with a vendor over a single gold piece there's no way in hell you're going to be ripped off by a gnome covered in soot and let's be honest it's not even about the money it's about the principle at number that's just that's just in general haggling like mm. have ha- experience haggling Yes, because haggling <laughs> is fun. I mean, yeah. but And it's, it's kind of a lost art because you don't really do that anymore. No, not really. You um, know, there's a displayed price. You pay that price. Yeah, for sure. Uh, any neutral force of nature like Swamp Thing is okay in my book. I agree. Number five, the is it a mimic paranoia? It's not just chests anymore. It's doors, mm. chairs, rugs, even the occasional suspicious-looking tankard. The fear is real, y'all, and every slight touch is preceded by a wary I poke it with my sword gently. There's just no better satisfaction as a DM than to watch your party never trust a single room ever again. I like that as something to uh, inspire that paranoia, for sure. Um, mm. Mimics are just fun. You should yes. use mimics a lot more for more than just chests. Um, yes. I I think now at least there's more like stat blocks for not mi- not chest mimics, mm-hmm. right? And just mimics as kind of a template. Exactly. I think that is a thing now. Um yeah. it didn't used to be unfortunately, but I mean it's easy to kind of transpose and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Um <laughs> man mentioned mimic fear and didn't mention the gazebo. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um Excuse me, goodness. I would just like Swamp Thing to be a monster who likes the swamp and hangs out there, but if he's needed, he's going to help. Like an introverted yeah. teenager who likes hanging out with friends. Yeah. Hmm. I yeah. mean, that's pretty much what he is in some uh, some interpretations, like I, probably the yeah. better ones. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Or at least the more critically acclaimed ones, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. At number six, the DM says, so you touch it? Ah, the six words you never want to hear if you're a player. You thought that ominous-looking gem was safe? The equivalent of a movie jump scare, this statement makes every adventurer second-guess their entire existence. That is a very fun moment, for sure. Yes. So, like, (laughs) you ask, so so you do that. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) For any (laughs) situation, just to give them that little bit of fear. (laughs) Yeah, it's so good. I love doing that. (laughs) It is really good. So you open the door. 
Ah, <laughs> uh, ah, uh, uh, well, hmm, Wait, now that you said that. <laughs> there's an extension to this one as well. Yeah. Where, uh, let's say, uh, you know, you're opening a door or a chest or whatever you're doing. Right. Uh, you ask, so where are you standing mm. while you do this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a great one. Mm-hmm. The other, the other part, of course, being, so you guys, while this is happening, are doing what? Yeah, what do you do? Where, where are all the rest of yeah. you? <laughs> Make everybody start going, oh, fuck, oh, what fuck. did you and do? The, the best part is when it's a fake out. It's like, where are you? How do you, how do you open it? Yeah. That's another one. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you kind of, uh, do you just grab it with your hand? <laughs> I, op- I open it uh, gen- gently, like really gently. Oh, okay. Oh, no, but what I mean is, like, are you using your hands yeah. to lift the lid? Yeah. Are you behind it and, like, pulling the lid right. back? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then when they open it, it's just nothing. Yeah, it's just like, oh, okay, so there's some gold in there? And then you get the, you motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, Every so you, time. <laughs> yeah. That's a great one. So you do that as up there with roll a wisdom save out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, why did I do that? Oh no, you're good. Don't worry about no, it. You're fine. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. It's, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you do that? Because I asked you to. Yeah. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> uh, Godzilla is at his best when he's a neutral force of nature, protecting his home and not caring about the humans. Yes. Yeah, I would agree. There are sometimes. Well, I, mm, no, not really. No, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Other like it's it can be more entertaining sometimes when there's like that he goes like oh good job and you know gives his little thumbs up for some reason, mm. <laughs> but uh, other than that I mean that's just the silly aspect that really makes it kind of shine. Mm. Everything else it's like no he's just a he's just a thing that yeah, is out he's there. Just a, he's just a guy. Yeah, just he's leave just him a alone. Big old guy. Leave him alone. He'll leave you alone. And if you keep shooting him, he's just gonna get a little pissed. <laughs> Yeah, but I think we can all agree that the best version of Godzilla is obviously the one that laughs at King Kong when he hits him with this laser and the one that talks in weird fucking synthesized voice to anger us. <laughs> that one's just weird. <laughs> that one's fucking weird. That one's and of weird. course it's from fucking Godzilla versus Gigan and I'm yeah. like, fuck, Gigan's awesome. But why do you have to make it a fucking stupid? It's a weird one. <laughs> Uh, oh, I love Guy Gan. Yeah. <laughs> Number seven, overplan for a simple task. A locked door. Instead of picking <laughs> a lock or knocking, let's <laughs> concoct a multi layered strategy involving illusion magic, a makeshift battering ram, and an overly complicated diversion. That locked yeah. door stands between you and destiny. The- no, no, no. It's, uh, <laughs> it's just stuck, guys. <laughs> You didn't have well, to we, burn it down. <laughs> we need no. We needed to. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. There was yeah. no option. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> God, <laughs> it it can lead to really good things for sure. Uh, it certainly can. <laughs> Not in our case, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it led to some okay things. It was alright. Hey, we opened the door. You opened the door later on. You know, <laughs> we didn't fucking Lit. suffocate. Yeah, almost. Yeah, it could have been bad, <laughs> but you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. Uh not gonna Why lie. Was there a wooden door in a cave. <laughs> Shouldn't it have been stone? <laughs> uh yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> it was made by dwarves. They don't use wood. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> Their stuff was down there. It's fine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh not gonna lie, I see him as a force of nature just having his daily walk, but in the human's view, he's destroying everything by accident and he's mm. getting uh, shot. It's, it's like flies bothering him. Yeah. Pretty much. It's very accurate, honestly. Yeah. Parties without rogues have led to some of the dumbest shit I've ever DM'd for. <laughs> <laughs> very much can, yeah. How are we gonna sneak through this and be like, without them noticing the entire time, yeah. Nobody's That's where sneaky. you do like the tall guy in the trench coat. Yep. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I would love it if someone just played that straight where it's like, hey, I'm trying to get into this movie. I'm really tall. You can give yeah. me a, you know, yeah, and that's yeah, it. That's sure. the whole reason that yes. they want to get in. <laughs> you fucking dumb. Warlock this game is stupid, deep. though. This game that we play is dumb. <laughs>
scheming for advice, the wizards drawing schematics. Meanwhile, the barbarian's wondering why nobody's tried the doorknob. Oh, and in the end, you just knock it down because the barbarian also has no patience. Eight, do fantasy drugs. It's hmm. just elf root, they said. Ooh. It'll be fun, they said. Cut to your paladin trying to hug a tree because they're convinced it's in danger from the bushes on the other side of the road. It's a wild world out there. If you've ever wondered what happens when your barbarian samples some gnome-crafted hallucinogens, well, there's no better time than now to find out. Just, you know, watch out for side effects. At number nine, a t Yeah, I mean, um, in general... I've never thought of that. Yeah, in general, having... Um, a, your fantasy drugs is uh, interesting, and it, it creates a lot for the world in general, mm -hmm. right? Um, not just the fact that you can have silly, fun, uh, hallucinogenic uh, trips or whatever, yeah. but you also now have a, a new commodity that needs to mm -hmm. be bought and sold by some people. Who buys it? Who sells it? Um, yeah. Uh, wh how is, is it, it an illegal one? Is it fully, is it allowed, like, uh, is it legal? Mm-hmm. Is it uh, recreational? Do people weaponize it? Yeah. How is it manufactured? Uh, is it hard to manufacture? Um, mm -hmm. The ingredients themselves, is it uh, renowned for those who get the ingredients because it is so hard to manufacture? Or is it so is it, simple that like peasants literally can just do it? Is it a trade good? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If it's legal, obviously. Is it, Would... is it something that's created by a faction in order to hold power over another faction? Um, is yeah. it the CIA? Is it the CIA? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I immediately think I'm going to do it. Star Trek. Uh, so there's there's an oh. episode where um, it's spoilers, I guess. Uh, but uh, there's an episode where the the whole point is there's two planets. One planet, um, they had a sickness, uh, and well, both planets had this sickness that happened, and one mm -hmm. planet found this thing this plant that could cure it, right? Mm -hmm. And then they discovered, oh, it's also, like, addictive. Ooh, mm -hmm. okay. Um, we like well, this. We'll do it enough to, like, cure ourselves, but then we'll sell it to the other guys on the other planet and basically make them our slaves because ah. they have now become addicted to this drug, and they mm -hmm. think that it's the sickness coming on onto them when they just go through withdrawals. Mm -hmm. Um. So is that something that you could use for one faction to another of this is something that is good for you, we promise. We're the only ones who can make it. It's mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> you know? A lot of Lean things. Lean into to be a done. monopoly. We're all familiar with monopolies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um I did that one uh I made fire venom. Yes, you did, Timothy. Uh fire venom is legal but restricted. Um Guys, it's salts from the elemental plane of fire. It's all natural. It can't be bad for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Tend to fantasy ball. Every party deserves to feel like Cinderella. Who doesn't love good masquerades? Get those fancy dresses and suits on. Dance with elven lords. Sure, you came for the dance, the intrigue, the exotic foods, but plot twist, there's a cult downstairs and they've misplaced their sacrificial dagger. And you, party members, inevitably stop some sort of assassination or heist. And the party goes on. At number ah, so uh, there's a double entendre in there because oh. they're at a party and he called the yes. players the party members. Yes, that's true. <laughs> so nice. I know it's not intentional. I know that that was not what was intended, but I like it. Yes. Um, <laughs> anyway, go on. I think that I think that's uh, an Aiden story, if I remember right, because he was going he had mm -hmm. his his uh, his party go to a ball and there were cannibals or something in the basement. Yes. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. And they were like, oh, we're going to eat this dude. And then they learned about it and they either tried to or did stop it or something. Yeah, I don't quite remember. But I remember they didn't fight them. I think that was the end thing that happened. They didn't fight them. Yeah. They actually got out without having to fight, which was yeah. interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Lucky them. Yeah. They want to fight a cannibal cult. Yeah. Um, and, like, I, I like the idea of doing those kinds of things, the fancy gathering that could be mm -hmm. more than what it is, but could also just be the fancy gathering for networking and such, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it, again, it introduces a lot of, uh, powerful people into the world. If it's something that's fancy, right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you have, uh, the ability to introduce these players to them and then get jobs from those people in the future and all that kind of good stuff that can happen. Or you can find information about them to use against them. Lots of things, lots of mm -hmm. things, right? And it's also just kind of a really, it's an enjoyable and surprisingly underused, um, fantasy trope. 
yes. that takes place in a lot of movies and shows, but yeah. I've n- almost never really hear about it in actual games. Yeah. Um. The the thing that I would utilize it more of instead of in D and D really, um, is vampire because vampire does this all mm-hmm. the time. Um, Except you change over the fancy masquerade balls for fucking raves, yeah, raves and orgies. It, well, so, basically. so both though, because okay. you have your raves and stuff for just the the ones who aren't really doing shit. They don't have to care about it too much. You know, that's not the Elysium stuff because the Elysium mm. stuff is more. We are highbrow. We need to show that we are the best. We mm-hmm. need to show ourselves off, which I makes see. it more of an elegant kind of masquerade ball kind of thing sometimes. And it's um, always the is it the Ventru that are the top dogs? I don't remember. Uh so it it depends. Sometimes um it depends on who the um who's the ruling. Prince. Yeah, who is the prince, but um Ventru are usually was... very good at it, yeah. Yeah, I I remember early. This is from Masquerade Bloodline, so sure. I don't remember. Uh, it was the um, the species of vampire that can't subsist off of like vermin or homeless. Blood. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's that one because they're yeah, all super the fancy Ventrue. and they're like, yeah, okay, that is the Ventrue. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In the actual TTRPG, it's less. Um, or I think they still can't do that uh, for uh, feeding off of animals, but their whole thing is they can only feed off like a certain type of thing. So, ah, okay. like, um, and you can choose whatever. So, like, uh, it could be just redheads in general, or it could be okay. orphans, or it could be, you know, like, <laughs> and, well, that's the thing, because there are adult orphans. They've lost oh, absolutely. their parents, right? So, like, mm-hmm. it works. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you make orphans to feed off of? Yes. Okay. Except you would be killing them, and that would incur uh, stains, and that could be bad for you, because you could lose your humanity, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I just but, didn't know if that was like a little loophole that you could exploit. Oh, I would absolutely allow that for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh. Do, do, do. Uh. It depends on the country on how legal fire venom is, but no country has a ban on fire venom. Oh, okay. Ah, that's good. Um. Very saucy. Hmm. <laughs> Best part of fighting cannibals is someone is getting dinner and a show. <laughs> hey. True. Good shit. Uh, is it wrong to eat a cannibal? Oh, those philosophical uh, questions. I would say... Well, uh, no? I feel like you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Yeah. What if they What if they were fine with it, you know? Because they're like, oh, you're a cannibal yeah. too, fuck. I'm dying, yeah, but like, like, I well, respect it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the thing that uh, that I brought up a while ago, I think it was only to these guys, is very funny. Um, technically, uh, eating people is vegan because people are not considered animals. Mm. <laughs> you can go into that all you want, but the, the argument that I'll present is the fact that we have human rights and animal rights. True. If it... If we were considered animals, it would just be rights. <laughs> we kind of consider ourselves to be above animals, whether that is that's true, you know. So technically, it's vegan. <laughs> that's true there because it's vegan is only animal products. Yeah, that's yeah. it. You're right. You're right. So it's just a funny little <laughs> thing you can say that's like, oh hey, well you know, everybody, you guess I'm vegan. going vegan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd just that's, be funny to be like, good. you know, you make a character who's a vegan cannibal. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's like, well, technically, it's not ve- it's, it's vegan. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> be uh, fucking dumb. Uh, the Dracolic stra- uh, dungeon in Moorworth does not allow brawls. Uh, it's too high end of a place. Oh, interesting. Okay. What was it called? The Dracolith dungeon. Oh, okay. Or, sorry, Dracolich dungeon. That's fucking cool. You go. I hope it has like dungeon style decor. I would imagine, right? 10 The Tavern Brawl, an iconic D&D experience when diplomacy fails, tables fly, and bards, well, they're just there to serenade the chaos. Did the gnome just body slam a troll? That number of- I I've never in Baldur's Gate, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've never um I've never even thought about a tavern brawl um in any of my games just cuz uh, I mean, 
usually you don't want that to happen uh, as a party. Yeah. Right? Um, Because then you you could, you know, wind up getting hurt, knocked out, or you get arrested. Yeah, exactly. Arrested. That's the that's the thing that I immediately go to, because even if you didn't start it or anything, you're going to get fucking taken in and questioned and all that kind of yeah, stuff. You're and gonna it's going to put a, a damper on your day. You know? Yeah. Now, granted, it was just a tavern brawl, and as long as nobody died, they'll probably let you out pretty yeah. quickly. But yeah. But you know, it's the inconvenience yes. of the matter, right? Indeed. <laughs> I wouldn't, although given it depends on what's going on in the campaign at the time, mm. because if it's like you know you're actually just in town after oh, an sure. adventure. Oh hi! What the fuck? <laughs> Sorry, there's a tank on difficulty three. Anyway, oh. um. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, uh, yeah. If you're after an adventure and you're just in town relaxing, then yeah. I think that'd be fine. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. a little yeah. bit of role play to have you be like, oh, you got in a brawl and you got arrested. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, it it, it, it all depends on the situation, of course. Yes. Um, Humans are animals to me. We eat, sleep, piss, and fuck just like animals. It's true. Mm. It's true. And I, yeah. Language, just... little missy. <laughs> Watch your fucking mouth. <laughs> uh. 11 almost end the world. It was just a gemstone. Who knew it would unleash an ancient evil? But hey, fixing our mistakes is half the fun, right? Every party should know what it's like to go read the map and accidentally read the scroll with the ancient prophecy instead. Classic mix-up. Now there's an ominous cloud overhead and the ground's shaking. And number 12. Um. Yeah, I mean, it could be a plot hook, right? Like, uh, it's fine. Um, hmm. it, it, it could lead to feeling like you've accomplished something or it could lead to feeling like you fixed the problem that you created. <laughs> um, but like, it's fine as a thing. Like, it's not, not a bad thing to experience. Um, yeah. So. But I would also say it's not something you must experience. Yeah. I, I don't think it needs to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They literally, literally Dragon Dragon says, so be the cause of the problem. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's the thing as well. It's like I I mean it's it is a it's a good plot hook. It is. Um it gets you unless you're, you know, the guy that doesn't care, uh which mm -hmm. probably you would at that point. Um because I don't know, you it's the whole uh who cares about the galaxy? Oh, I do. I live in it. You know. Uh, yeah. Uh I blow anyway. up the earth. I live here. Yeah, exactly. Um it does have dragon stuff in it, like a big black dragon skull and bones set on the wall. Ooh. Alejo can find Aww. the comment where I talked about it, I think. Okay, cool. That's cool. I like it. Yeah. Get a castle as a home. Every adventurer dreams of settling down in a fortress loaded with cannons and traps and treasure and a dungeon. But remember, home insurance doesn't cover dragon attacks. But at least you have a courtyard. And number thirty. I think that, and this is something that was... um. This was something that was fixed with uh, Coville put out, uh, what was it, Strongholds and something, something in Strongholds. Uh, it's a mm -hmm. it's a supplement that added in um, 5e's, uh, into 5e, more uh, things to buy and how to create a castle and all that kind of stuff um, mm -hmm. for players. Uh, because that used to be a thing in, in old D&D, right? Um, mm -hmm. It was a thing. If you were you... a fighter, you could get your own castle. If you were yeah. a priest or a wizard, you could get your own tower, <laughs> or um, your own tower or your own like temple. Yeah, it was it was its own thing that was a lot more uh, focused on, or at least it was more expanded on in older editions because they gave all those supplements that had all those things in it. Strange yes. that we never saw one, at least to my knowledge, we never saw one for 5e that ever did that. It would be something yeah. to spend your money on, you know? Uh, yeah. Uh, but, and we had to get it from a, a third party, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, interesting things that you think about. They write what they want to write. I know, I know. <laughs> Too bad it's not the things that we want. <laughs> Sometimes, yes. Um, mm. But, uh uh yeah i think that 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 should be something that's more of an incentive that's given because something like giving land um giving mm. buildings you know titles and all that kind of stuff is something yes. that can be a reward because it can give them influence right mm -hmm. um adding influence as a factor in your games can again give it more uh life because mm. instead of necessarily paying for everything you could 
become so no like known that people give you things or you can go uh i'm part of the king's royal court uh mm. could i have like a table <laughs> so there was something like that that came up in a seth skarkowski video and Ooh. unfortunately i do remember i do not remember which one it was but okay. basically what the video was about was or at least the section of the video was yeah. about running different kind of campaigns and implementing different kinds of systems. Okay. Or at least this was what the segment was of. Yes. Um, and what he described was he ran a game where all of the players were playing as dwarves and they were all members of like a dwarf hold. Ooh. Um, okay. And, um, they like went back on, they went on adventures and they did like dwarf stuff. Yeah. But when they were back in the hold, they had an entire like custom honor system where, Ooh. you know, you, you're going around, you're doing dwarf things, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, we need, we need you to, you know, make sure that this delivery of swords or weapons or yeah. armor gets delivered to the mines on time so they can fight off, you know, shit in the mines. Right. And then if you did that, you would get a little bit of a monetary reward, but you would also get an honor reward that you could then spend on using it. You could use it to affect decisions made in political situations. Cool. Because they would go into like the dwarf, like effectively like town hall meetings and they'd yeah, be like, yeah. oh, we need to do this. We should close the doors to the, you know, the, the, the man things. Mm hmm. And it's like, no, we need to keep it open so that trade can flourish because they are useful allies for however stupid they are, yada, yada, yada. And then in order to make the other people agree, you would have to spend honor or compare honor scores. Yeah, yeah. And it was a really interesting system. And I think that there are actually like fully written systems and not just custom ones for that. Probably. But that's definitely an idea that would be really interesting now that we're talking about other... um other types of rewards yes yeah, yeah, yeah and how we're talking about like influence now because that's literally what that is yeah absolutely um i think um if i recall correctly um from my little knowledge of blades in the dark that i've gained from listening to it um mm -hmm. it also has this kind of system where the more jobs you do in specific uh, ways and things can um, influence how like the rewards that you get um, as well as your control over an area and such um, mm -hmm. and things that can um, uh, from your quest givers and stuff that can be used to curry favor and all that kind of shit right um, mm -hmm. and it helps with your upgrades for your um, thieves den whatever it is uh, that you that you have as well as your, your payday to safe house yes exactly uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it it would help with all of that kind of stuff for sure and mm. um, and it's just a, it's having more than just monetary rewards is always something that's very good I think mm -hmm. um, not only just for the more depth but it can lead to these different decisions because of role play reasons, because of these gains that you have, because of personal quest reasons, all this kind of stuff that can really flourish because, oh, I need to get this done because I need to get the favor from this guy so that mm -hmm. later down the line, potentially I could have, uh, uh, I don't know, my, my, my daughter marry into his family and be better off. You know, mm. like something like that, right? Where if you're in like a fantasy setting, um, well, I mean, even if you're not in a fantasy setting, who knows? yeah, uh, <laughs> that's the thing, right? Uh, it yeah. works unfortunately all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it it really does give a bunch of uh, uh options. Um, mm. so think about these things, everybody. Do the thing. I it's, and it's now they think about it. If I remember correctly, I think the video that I was referencing with the mm. dwarves was a theme campaigns. I think okay. it was that. Okay, gotcha. So if you look at his uh, videography or uh, body of work, and you look for yes. you know theme campaigns, it might be that. There you go. I would just recommend just watching his body of work anyway. Yeah, it's it's really good. It's pretty good, and it, it's the fact that we almost never talk about it is the is that's the seal of approval. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Because we have nothing to say because it's all good. It's all pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. Okay. I have really wanted to build a base in a game, but I love strategy in RTS games. Yeah. Yeah. Building bases is super fun to me in most everything. Honestly, like, uh, when. Uh, when uh, um, World of Warcraft 
had uh Warlords of Draenor. Yes. Yep, I know. It, as <laughs> soon as that had that and they said, Oh, you could build your own base, I was immediately like, I'm in. Yep. Let's fucking it. do it. Yep, yep. And I got it. And then I played it. <laughs> and it was fun. It was fun. It was good. I liked it. Yep. I remember <laughs> doing that. Don't you worry. Back in the day. Um, yep. And then they kept going with it, which I was like, oh, that's good. But then I stopped playing. Um, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. But, you know. Mm, what a shame. <laughs> unfortunately, I say. But then I think about it and I say, no, 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 no. That's better for me and my time. <laughs> Actually. True. <laughs> Um, there we go. Uh, sorry, I was gone. I was emotionally saddened by a theorist being gone. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. No. Well, welcome oh, back. Oh, you know what? Hmm. Uh, just the word gone made me think of it. You, did you hear that Akira Toriyama passed away? No, really? Yep. Oh. Akira Toriyama passed away at 67. Damn. Oh, that's too young, man. It is too young. That sucks. Very sad. Man. Like, oh. fucking legend. Yeah. Absolute legend. Yeah, for sure. Damn. Yeah. Uh, well. Lost one of the lost one of the the ones, a real one. Yeah, a real one for sure. Mm. Or went out for Anyway. Him. Uh <laughs> Dwarf Fortress is great for building bases. Yes. So <laughs> is so and is dying uh, in them. Yes. And so is Rimworld. I would also yes. recommend Rimworld a lot. God, if I could just figure out the controls and how to get stuff to do stuff like consistently, man, I would love that. Yeah. Um I cannot figure out the interface and I'm yeah. so sad. There's honestly, there's a bunch of quality of life mods that you would probably want to have as well. Cause after you get them, it's like, you never want to go back day. to vanilla. <laughs> yeah. And um, I would also want to just do the mods where you can, you know, like make a Cthulhu cult and shit. Those are fun. Yes. Yes. They're really fun. Dragon attacks, but at least you have a courtyard. And number 13, get betrayed by an Hey, NPC. I called it. I did that. <laughs> Yes, you did. Who was it? And when and where? You'll have to You'll watch have to, to find out. Go watch Devils and Dice to find out. But yes, it's very good. It's so mm -hmm. good. Once trusted. Ah, the as long as it's trail. done well. Every party should know the humbling and jading feeling of having that one person you trusted stab you in the back and double the credit if they're also the hot character. That friendly blacksmith, <laughs> secret cultist, the old librarian, arch lich in disguise. Trust no one. Your castle's cool, but remember that butler you hired? He's selling secrets to the necromancer next door. Of course he is. Trust issues fun. intensify. At number 14, travel to a new plane. Your party Ooh. has done a lot of adventuring and a quick vacation is in order. The Shadow Realm sounds lovely this time of year. Just, you know, pack some garlic and maybe a silver Silver weapon. But honestly, every party just needs to travel to a new plane of existence because sometimes the grass really is just greener in the Feywild or more neon. And number um, I think planar travel in general should just be more included um, mm. because other planes, it's it's hard to do them justice sometimes, to be mm -hmm. fair, um, because they are supposed to be more alien mm. um, with their own ways and stuff. But honest, that doesn't that shouldn't stop you from trying, you know, Um it's it's like the Feywild is something that is barely used. We've yeah, talked about this sucks. before. Um, it's very shameful. We should really <laughs> be using that way more. Uh, mm -hmm. The Shadowfell is uh, used a bit, um, but going there isn't really a thing, really. Yeah. Not to but... mention you don't even really want to be there because no. the longer you're there, it makes you like impossible to leave. So. Yeah, it's bad for you. Um, technically... Um, uh, Ravenloft is its own plane, technically. Mm. Uh, so it's probably the most famous of planes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I would go there a lot. It's pretty cool. <laughs> would I you? wish I well I wouldn't personally, but I oh, would run, okay. yeah, run I was games. To say, like, I, this is a coward, Alejo. Uh, yeah, <laughs> certified Alejandro coward. Juan Luis Martinez, the coward. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Uh, but. Uh, uh, what I would say as a big criticism of it, though, is that there are more places in that land mm -hmm. uh, that are not used. It's only Ravenloft. It's always yes. only Ravenloft. Now, Ravenloft mm. is cool, and I love it a lot. Don't get me wrong. But there's more than that. Exactly. I want to see more of that being used. Yes. Um, and I think it's such a disservice that they have all these planes established, and they don't have any books on them. Yes. It's ridiculous. They used to. They used to have things that were all about them, mm. but uh, not like full books on each plane, but like they had more than a paragraph in your DMG, you know, yeah. um, the way it should be, um, or at least eh, not really the way it should be. But what I want to see and mm. what I would love to do 
We tried to do it with um, an Underdark campaign that never really got off the ground. Yes, yeah. I really want to play a campaign in one of those settings just fully. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Where we were originally going to do an Underdark campaign where we play as Underdark denizens. Yeah. But... I would love to see that in the Feywild. God, oh, that'd yeah. be so cool. The Feywild, um, uh, let's see. I would also like to see it at um, the Beastlands. The Beastlands might be cool. Oh, yes. Um, uh, uh, Mechanis, right? It's Or something? Uh, yeah. yeah. That's The one where everything's like clocks and yes. shit. It's fucking weird. It's very interesting because it's all law, right? It is yes. pure law. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm very interesting um i don't know how interesting it would be to be in there for far too long because <laughs> yeah for too long and eh, sure. it might be just a, a dip right um, yeah because i don't really know what kind of stories you would tell there yeah um but uh yeah so eh. yeah um doable but it'd be a little weird yeah for sure uh i heard about toriyama it was really sad man yeah mm. um Barovia is the land, Ravenloft is the plain, and also the name of the castle. There you go. Um, yeah, it, there's more than just Barovia, if I recall correctly. Most um, certainly. It, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. it just expanded out. Because, like, I mean, you could do it yourself, obviously, of like, oh, the the dark ones are just like, hey. Uh, sorry, wait, the dark powers. There we go. Yeah, um, and not the ruinous powers. Not the ruinous powers. <laughs> we just did Metro. That's why the dark ones were in my mind. Um, yep. <laughs> so the dark powers, uh, they just torture people all the time. So why not have them torture other big things? Because why not? You know? Because yeah. that's what they're doing at Strahd. They might as well do it to more things. Yeah. Because um, they can do whatever they want for some reason. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's pretty it's great, the honestly. Gods. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They're just the chaos gods. It really it. is. It really, oh, really fuck. Is. You know what I learned, actually? Mm. Okay. So, you know that image of all four chaos gods with, like, oh, there's Nurgle, yep. there's, you know, Corn and all that, and yep. how Slanesh looks, and Nurgle's yep. all fat with the big, wide smile and all yes. that? Yep. I learned this in a, like, a meme comic dub video. Mm-hmm. Those images of the chaos gods are not canon. Really? They are not canon. Huh. Interesting. I know. And so I'm like, what the fuck? (laughs) My mind has been blown. Yeah, that's weird. I know. I guess, I mean, they are just, like, things that are out there. Yeah, they are just sentient warp energy. Yeah. Sentient emotion and, and like, concepts. Why would they need a form? Yeah. They don't need one. Yeah. So, wow, that's cool. I know, it's so fucking weird. Huh. <laughs> and so, like, I'm so used to seeing Slanesh as, like, the snaky, you know, yeah, long yeah. tongue bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. Like, yeah, that's, nope. No, it's just energy that's out there. Really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the energy of horny. That's right. Um... How about the plane of fire and living in the city of brass? Yes. That would be cool too because it'd be very genie full. Yes. Or exactly. full of genies. Sorry. Exactly. Genie um, filled. It would be, uh, yeah, it would be super cool. Yes. Uh, Ifrit. There's a lot of, Ifrit. oh, he, there's, there's a lot of lore about genies that doesn't get used. Jesus. Yes. <laughs> it is. It, there's like the, the, uh, the plane of air with the actual gins, they have mm. their palaces and they treat everybody pretty good and all yeah, that kind then of stuff. you have the Marut, the water yep. ones. Yep. Um and the Ifridi. I don't yeah. remember what the earth ones are. I don't are called. remember what they're called, but they're pretty cool. Oh but, my god. Yeah. Uh, genies are underused. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just and like it would everything. be really interesting to have it be where like wishes are getting thrown out everywhere. Mm. because you have like a genie conflict and they have to try to wish to do stuff against mm. each other that would be weird that'd be interesting yeah yeah um there are a whole bunch of old novels in ravenloft that bring other lands up yeah uh it'd be cool uh seeing as humans are inherently a little chaotic with free will 
Uh, it'd be cool if spending time in Me- uh, Mechanist drove you insane with its uniformity. Ooh, yeah. yeah everything's straight fucking lines. Yeah. And it's boring. Black and white. You just, uh, yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. No, that'd be good. It's kind of like the, um, it would basically be kind of like Shea Gorath versus Jigalag. Yes. Remember that? Yeah, absolutely, actually. Yeah. He oh, was wow. the Daedric or- Prince of Order and everything was going to turn gray and metal mm-hmm. and shit. Yeah. More neon? At number 15, attend Gladiatorial Arena. Hey, there's a tournament in town. Nothing says tourists like cheering for a naked dwarf in a gelatinous cube. But when the fight ends early and the king gets bored, well, now you were the lucky winners of today's lottery. As a spectator, it's popcorn and cheers. As a competitor, it's how did I get roped into this? Either way, it's unforgettable if you survive. Um, yeah, gladiatorial kind of things can be interesting. Um, yeah. It just... I don't think I would immediately jump to them getting Being shoved in into central, it i think yeah. having them in the audience would be a little bit actually slightly more interesting at least yeah. for me i i because think it's so different i think viewing something like that and then um introducing it that way of like this is the champion of the arena you know mm-hmm. like um if you if you want to you can try to win your way up to him you could um mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff and then just seeing his prowess yeah. Um, maybe he, it uh, do basically the arena from Oblivion where, you know, yes. you fight the Grey Prince, but then you learn that he's like, uh, there's a twist to his backstory. And if you find that and you tell him he's like actually defeatable. Yes. Yep. Um, or he can just be friends. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, it's an interesting setting. Um, and then mm-hmm. even like having it be uh, more dark of oh it's a slave arena oh god the gladiators oh, are no. fighting oh no yeah. um, so and then now we gotta have like a gladiator rising that's right gladiator <laughs> uprising <Jesus>. yes <laughs> um, you know just, just like that movie oh wow <laughs> yeah um, there, there's a lot that you can do with it for sure mm-hmm um, but again, I wouldn't put it as an essential. I wouldn't put no, it as no, an essential. No. It's just something that's cool. Yeah. Um, uh, I just nailed down that my troll character follows Orcus and is wild, uh, and it is Ooh. wild that Talithorin had to give him potions to clay- calm him down enough to work for him. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Interesting that a troll would work for Orcus. Yeah. Or worship, or, I don't know. Yeah. Uh... Oh, look, the prize for beating the arena champ is a bag of holding you wanted. Have fun. Is that yeah. bag of holding you wanted? Yeah, that's yeah. another thing. If you really want them to get to do that, you give them something like that. Because it's like, yeah. it's like just, this I mean, is what you wanted. You did want this. It's here. <laughs> Will you claim it? <laughs> oh, so you know what? Fuck. I, I'm going to say this now because I keep forgetting to say it. Mm. I'm so fucking mad because there was such an easy solution to the last uh, session we did of Delta Green. Mm. (laughs) You probably already know what it is. No, I don't. I I didn't have to climb all the way up Mm -hmm. before trying to go along the window. I could have done like from the second floor. Yeah. And then just tried again and again. Yeah, you probably could have. I was such a (laughs) dumbass, dude. I got so tunnel vision oh. on. I have to reach our room on that. That is and fair. It's on that floor. Hey, it happens, man. It does happen. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd like to uh, retroactively do that. <laughs> oh, far too, no. far too late. <laughs> yeah. He's already in the ground. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Half of him is in a dumpster. The other half is on the ground. <laughs> it's fair. Yeah. <laughs> Very sad. Yeah. <laughs> He made 16. it through one. He did. <laughs> and have a high seas pirate arc. Every party should know what it's like to swap dungeons for ships and goblins for pirates and treasure chests for, well, bigger treasure chests. Yar, matey. Plus, how can you turn down the captain with a pet displacer beast? Speaking of displacer beasts, this here is Tobias. If you leave a comment down below with the timestamp he shows up, I might just shout you out in the next video. But only if Tobias likes you, because if my displacer kitten doesn't like you, I just don't trust you. Well, um uh, sure uh yep. the thing for the pirate thing though is what i was more interested in uh not yeah. your engagement plug uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I get it i respect the hustle it's fine it's nothing that i, I care mm. about um but yeah but uh uh ships sea yeah, ships please. and the ocean and water yes yes because we we've Use talked about the this water. before yes um 
there's not enough usage of it because everybody's afraid of it because of all the things that you will throw at them because they are on the water. Yes. <laughs> Which, I mean, fair. Because yes. that's going to happen. It is. Because, specifically because the opportunity comes up so rarely. It that's does. the problem. Yes, exactly. If you did it more often, I wouldn't have to you know just feel so pressured to be like okay i gotta use all this cool shit but yeah. all the cool shit's really scary it's the so, only time good luck. it's the only time that's why what you need to do if you really want this to happen is make your campaign set in an archipelago yes everywhere is unconnected the only way to do it is via air or sea yes make it so air is expensive like, really expensive, so C is the easy way to go. It's slower, but it's cheaper. Yes, and, <laughs> like, no one is, you know, d d and then you know what you need to do. You uh. can also be like, hey, uh, we wouldn't ordinarily take you by air, but it turns out there's an infestation of griffins that's, like, up sure. there. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, you can do that for sure. If you fall, if you fall from the airship, you will die. If you <laughs> fall off your ship... You will probably still survive. You can you can get out of there. It'll be fine. Yeah, you can swim. Yeah. Maybe if you have points and swim. Do you? No. Oh, okay. Well. Ooh. Ah. Uh, well. Uh, ooh. <laughs> but uh, yeah. No. Exactly. Um. The the sea is rarely used. Please use it more. It's good. Uh. Cog the troll is basically a ball of animal animalistic chaos. So it made me uh, made sense to me that he follows the deity of the abyss and chaos. Sure. Yeah. That works. Mm -hmm. Um, Orcus himself, though, is more of an undead um, being. Yes. So He's the demon lord of undeath. If, or de I, demon prince of undeath. Yes. Um, now, uh, it might make sense, actually, because the troll is technically undying. Like, yes. Actually, so, yeah, good shout. There you go. And, I mean, hell, you could also be like, hey, uh, my troll is deathly afraid of fire because he's like, man, I really like being alive, but... Mm. That I can be killed with fire. So what if I worship Orcus and make sure that that way, even if I am killed, I come back as like a zombie troll. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing. That's like that. Yeah. You're just hedging your bets. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, fools, you aren't getting my dwarf on a ship. I can go off of this Island. If I dig deep enough, mm. which would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> that would be great. I would actually yeah. love that of dwarves yeah, that literally are like, all right, fuck this. They tunnel we... underneath and make subways under the yes, water. <laughs> absolutely. Like, fuck this. Don't want to go on the water. That shit's bad. I yeah, want to dig into the other cities. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah, man. That'd be, I would love that. Yeah. Death. Corsair campaign sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's the thing. If you want to. I was going to say, uh, that's the thing of, like, ship travel is just interesting because you have a lot to manage as well. At least in mm -hmm. my brain, I really like managing things. Um, uh, food. Uh, uh, ammo. Oh, scurvy. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, morale. Pirates. Yeah. Pirate, like, all the things that typical pirate stuff they need to figure out, you need to figure out. So, like... Mm -hmm. It's just, it's so much to, to now have to do deal with. Plus, cramped quarters. I mean, you got to get friendly with all these people. And if you hate somebody and they hate you, man, you're stuck on this boat for a while, man. <laughs> like, yeah, like weeks. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> it is bad. But um, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just this whole thing. And yeah, you don't have as much freedom of like uh, going like down the road and trying to, you know, go into the forest and all that stuff. But that's why you sail all the way to the other Island. Cause you want to go explore the Island. Yeah. And I know? mean, hell worst case scenario, if your players wind up getting bored of all the ship stuff, you can just fast forward some stuff. Exactly. You should definitely have some stuff going on on the ship. Yes. And you shouldn't just like treat it as like just a fast travel. No. But yeah, once everything is kind of played out, then you know you move yeah. on. It's only the important stuff that can kind of be brought up every now and then. Mm -hmm. Or if the, the player uh, themselves is like, "I would like to do this while we are traveling," you know. Yes. Um. If you are really interested in doing uh naval and like ocean adventures, you should definitely look into Seventh Sea. That's right. Uh, from Chaosium, it is a pirate RPG. Just period. Yep. Uh, fantasy pirates. It's really cool. Yes. Uh, travel through the underdark to avoid the sea. Good. Can mm -hmm. do that. Oh, I mean, well, you still have the sunless sea, so that's also <laughs> true. Fully work, but you know, <laughs> um, almost. 
the the mine tunnels collapsed from the weight of the sea above. None survived. <laughs> I mean, that happened to the Skaven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they tried to go somewhere, and they opened a gnaw hole under the ocean and drowned half of Skaven Blight. <laughs> Which is fucking hilarious. Uh, of course they did. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Did you know that Ikat Claw blew up the moon? <laughs> I didn't he know He literally that. blew up Morshleeb. Like the green that. moon. Why? Because somebody... Okay, so here was the here was the deal. Mm-hmm. One of the Skaven clans was like, "We're gonna tractor beam the moon closer to <laughs> Earth so we can get more warp stone." Okay. And then Ikat Claw was like, "Fuck you! I'm blowing that shit up." <laughs> Why? Because I can show you up that way. That's true. It's fucking hilarious. That's great. I know. <laughs> oh god. Um... It's so dumb. <laughs> Uh, better learn to get along with your shipmates. Floggings will continue until morale improves. Mmm. And then you got a mutiny on your hands, Captain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For animal handling. At number 17, have a dream or nightmare that turns out to be prophetic. On oh. the pirate ship, you dreamed of a giant chicken. It's telling you to turn back or to make an omelet. Prophetic dreams are so vague, man. But then you find out it wasn't just a dream or bad mushrooms. Your dream was real. The purple frog will guide the way. And number 18, forget the checker traps the one time you ah. to. Nothing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that'll happen. <laughs> yes, this will. Um, but uh, prophetic dreams are interesting. Um, the use of, like, not necessarily divine intervention, but I guess divine... Uh, acknowledgement (laughs) you know like uh things like that where where you have these kind of things that are like oh you were chosen for a thing um can Mm -hmm. be something very interesting and can lead to a lot of very cool things Mm -hmm. um and then if you do the prophetic dream thing and it is that giant chicken thing well then when they're going to town they find like a restaurant (laughs) that's got a giant chicken sign yeah (laughs) called like the uh the dream cock or something yeah. i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh my god it's oh my just god. like in my dream and then, and then, and then, yeah they point they point like the soy jacks and they go it's the cock of dream <laughs> yeah dude i love that fucking god damn it <laughs> uh fuck uh <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, One of the things that I wanted to do a while ago, because yeah. I thought it was a really cool concept when I saw the anime. So a while okay. back, like a couple of years ago, I watched yeah. uh, The Seven Deadly Sins. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's fine. Yeah, it's um, fine. I liked, the be- I liked the beginning of it a lot because it kind of felt like original Dragon Ball a bit, you know, with sure. a kid going on an adventure. Yeah. Um, but later on, you know, it's all about the demons and the angels and all that shit and their big war. Um, but you learn that there were archangels who were like super fucking strong. They're the ones who actually, you know, like fight the war and like kill shit. Sure. They get shit done. Sure. But um, their powers were like really unique. Mm. And I loved the idea of being like, hey, your characters all have like this unique ability that you can use to your advantage. But if you die, it will pass on to someone else. So technically, your character is always the chosen one, but uh, you don't yeah. have plot armor. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I just like the idea of having those special powers because they were really interesting. One of them was like, it's called Sunshine, and you mm. get more powerful depending on the time of day. And at noon oh. for one minute, you're like ridiculously strong. That makes sense. I wouldn't give that to a player in a D&D game, but in right. the anime, it was really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. Yeah, And so that's a way you can do the chosen one thing without actually giving them the plot armor and making them feel like, oh, I can't die. You have yeah. that power that they have be able to like transfer. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, there is a thing in my world where some wild troll groups are nicer than others and let others live with them, such as ogres, orcs, goblins, oni, and humans. Yeah. Fair. Ooh. Oh, they let Oni with the... Uh, yeah. Oni are bad. <laughs> Usually, yeah. Yeah. Um, as long as you're okay with the nomadic wild and stri- uh, stripped ba- back life? Stri- striped back life? Stripped? Uh. Uh, 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 
I'm the chosen one? No, the chosen one is putting me on on read, so I need you to go get him for me. <laughs> putting them on red. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 red, yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, yep. uh, Hill Giants sometimes, too. Oh. Nice. Uh, you're the chosen one. That doesn't mean you can't die. It just means you're, you'd better not. Yes, mm. exactly. That's the thing. Humbles a rogue faster than missing the most obvious trip fire because they were too busy gloating. Every single obvious party will never wire. feel the I know sting the sound of, of that. feeling invincible. <laughs> Who cares about doors anymore? And then realizing, oh, there was a sign that said totally not a trap. Well, that was a clear giveaway. And number 19. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it'll happen. It just will. Uh, it's not mm. something that everybody needs to experience because it will happen. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it's just not like, I wouldn't call it a need. It's just something that's inevitable. <laughs> Yeah. Steal from a party member and pretend you didn't. Now, no. here's a bold move, but every party will definitely feel this one at some point. You're stuck in that net, and you notice your wizard buddy has a shiny new amulet. But it's okay. You'll give it back. Probably. At number two. Yeah, no. Um, no. Not good enough. Sorry. You didn't even yeah, do no. anything with that to, like, make it so that it's something that, like, you've talked about, discussed, and been okay with between both people. You know? Yeah, no. That's that's stupid. Like, if, if that Sorry. is the case of... Talking and like being fine with it on both ends, that's fine. You can go then forward fair, with it. Yeah. Forward with it. But like, not just have it happen because literally every single time it pisses somebody off. Yes. It does. Someone will get pissed if it's Some... not communicated in any way. Yes. It, it just, it, this has happened literally every single time I've seen it. So, mm. and it wasn't communicated. I mean, so, yeah. no. <laughs> you shouldn't experience that at all. No. Hey, you'll give it Not at all. Probably. At number 20, trust a shady NPC because they're attractive. Ah, the allure of a chiseled jaw or a sultry voice. They've got a secret map or some sort of dangerous quest for you. Wink, wink. Spoiler, it's a trap, but they're so pretty. Remember, looks can be deceiving and that handsome stranger might just want your gold or your soul. At 21. I missed what it was. I only got like the handsome stuff. What was that? <laughs> Basically, get deceived by a pretty stranger. Oh, so get deceived by somebody you trust. Uh, <laughs> I guess I think, trusted well, NPCs I mean, you is don't a lot. Have to be, yeah, yeah, it's, a it's lot not more. someone that you trust. It's just somebody hot. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, that's happened to me. It's something that happens, sure, but it's not yeah. something that you need to have happen. I would say that it is useful to have happen, so that way you learn <laughs> that you know. Don't just listen to people and things that hot people say. I mean, I think that's just something. I realize in life. that that's a very simple thing, yeah. but you'd be surprised how many people, you know. Yeah, but I don't even in the real world. Yeah, don't know that. <laughs> well, yeah, but I again, I don't think that it's something that you need to teach them. You know, like yeah, yeah I don't know. That's just something that's kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not saying it. Sh I'm not saying it needs to happen. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah, it yeah. could be useful if it does. Sure, 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 sure. That's um, about it. It's something that could, like, I can see it being good for those characters that do, like, the, the womanizer characters, right? Yes. Every single time that that happens, like, yeah, then you do that because it's like, oh, well, that's your character. You would have this happen to you. <laughs> like, it's just statistically a, a, a possibility that I am now having happen now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. Um, stripped back life. My spelling bites me again. Sorry. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> Um. Uh, also, in my world, every species can have nicer people in it, no matter how rare they are, including Oni. Ah, well, yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, I feel like that's just the case anyway. Like, in yeah. general. I just, yeah, I suppose I'm kind of judging a book by its cover mm -hmm. because I've read the backstory on yeah. Oni in, like, the Monster Manual. They're fucked. <laughs> the, the backstory for Oni in the Monster Manual is fucked. Yes, it is. It's I great. like it, but it's, it's fucked. <laughs> yep. Uh,. You always think you won't be the one. Oh, yeah, of course. That's why I, can I always... fix them. Yeah, I can fix them. That's why you got to get into the mindset that you will always be the one. Yes. <laughs> Paranoid stuff is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you might, might just want your gold or your soul. 
At 21, break out of jail. No campaign is complete without a daring prison break. Extra points if it involves disguises, inside men, or a strategically placed cake. Bars can't hold adventurers. Cue the classic jailbreak. Okay, I would like that. That would be kind of a funny thing to do, where you actually do use, like, a chisel in the cake strategy. (laughs) (laughs) That would be pretty funny. I would be cool with it happening, for sure. Um, Yeah. Again. Doesn't need to. Exactly. It would be an interesting thing to do, like, if you have the tavern brawl, and then uh, they all get arrested, and they have to do it. Yeah. I mean, because that way you can get a, a twofer, but every, yeah, again, every single situation is a, yeah, it could happen, right? Yeah, um, it could, and it would be fun if it did, but it doesn't have to. Exactly. Um, I know in, uh, I'm going to bring it up again, Blades in the Dark, uh, one of the things that can happen is that you can get sent to jail, and one of the mm-hmm. things you can do is break them out of jail um, in order no. to get them back. Yeah, I know. It's a whole what? thing. That's illegal. <laughs> You can't get it. You can't break out of jail. They'll get You're thrown in jail. <laughs> they put you in a room. You can't leave the room. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's it's insane. I, I don't know why these people crazy. try. Yeah. Um, Ridiculous. <laughs> and you can have literally like whole sessions of being in jail. Like that's a yeah. thing in um in Blades in the Dark, and that's cool. That's super cool. I like it. I like the idea. Um, so there are some things where it is built into the system itself. Um, but to be fair, you could have a whole Blades in the Dark game where you never have anybody get caught or sent to jail. Yeah, you just do like an Ocean's Eleven. You just do everything right. Yeah, exactly. Um, Which so, would be fun. <laughs> it would be. Um, or you just have like the perfect heist. Yeah. Sometimes it could happen. Sometimes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Cue the classic jailbreak montage. At number 22, have a shopping episode. Potions, check. Yes, New armor, That will happen. That That's will happen. Debate. Yeah, I was going to say, this is just something that will happen. You're, you, you, don't, you don't have to experience it, but it will happen. Yes. <laughs> Everybody will go find that one table in their, in their whatever system it is that says, this is what you can buy. They yes, will look over it, and everyone will look at it and then go... Guys, we got to go get some stuff. Yep. <laughs> and then they'll go, oh, yeah. And then everyone looks at the table and then they go, oh, shit, I need something, too. Oh, I need mm-hmm. something, too. <laughs> no, you, too? What? Oh, my God. We all need How? things. All of you, all of us want to buy stuff. This is, cr- what a fucking coinky dink. What's, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Man. Yeah, so, shopping yeah. episodes are tons of fun. Oh, yeah. Absolutely they are. I love it's it. kind of like going to a mall and going shopping. You know, it's it's fun. Yeah, yeah. Man, Even, back when going man. to the mall was a thing. <laughs> yeah, man. I, like, yeah. That, <laughs> These... that kind of shows how old I am. Well, I mean, like, I, I had that happen, too. I did that as well. Yeah. But, like. Yeah, it was, I miss that, honestly. To a degree, I do. To a degree yeah. now, like, if I were to go in a mall, I'd probably just get annoyed and want to leave. <laughs> Well, I would basically just kind of, like, walk around and just browse, maybe yeah. pick up, like, a thing or two. It's not like the old 90s thing where you get, like, a fucking mountain of bags of shit. Right. Yeah, it's true. Not like that. But, like, I, I don't know. Most malls don't have stores that I want to even check out anymore, you know? Yeah. And they don't even have their arcades anymore. Man, I miss yeah. the fucking arcades Yeah, so but they bad. do still have fucking bookstores, man. Bookstore, they, like, cafes. That is true. Mm. That is true. Some of them do. Some of that's them the, do. That's the good shit. Yeah, that's true. Because, you know, right. you, you go around shopping, and then you end with, like, a coffee or a tea yeah. in a bookstore, and then you leave. God. Yeah. That's, that's how you do it. You kind of unwind in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree on whether to buy the blue malls. or the green cloak <laughs> check yeah. i'm sure good there's malls. a world to save but there's also a sale on healing potions and fancy hats at number 23 ride a flying animal of some kind mounts are so passe why ride a horse when you can saddle up on a hippogriff or a flying carpet if you're it is also a mount just 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 to let you know any it anything you ride is a mount I, I think an he meant specifically like more an oh, exotic I know. mount oh i know <laughs> Yeah, but dude, I would Aladdin. totally go for a Griffins, flying carpet. Griffins, dragons, yes. flying snails, I don't know, it's D&D. The sky's the limit, just remember weird. to hang on tight. And I like 24. it, though. Yeah, I mean, like, flying is cool. Yes. That's just, in general, flying is cool. In fantasy, not in real life. I like flying in real life. It's neat. You do? Yeah. Have you flown? Yeah. Oh. Well, fl- flying myself, no. I've flown on planes, though. Yeah, no, I mean, I like, know. As a passenger, right? Yes. Um... But oh, yeah, piloting would be interesting me. as well. But 
Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. yeah. No. I'm kind of scared of flying. I've I, never done it before, but, you know. That's fair. Um, and I can understand it entirely. Um, but, like... Being up in a flying Pringles can that can get struck by lightning and, like, shoved 500 feet down, like, in an <laughs> instant. Like, ugh, very creepy. It's very true, but it's also statistically very unlikely. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get... I, I understand entirely. I, I do yeah. like it. There's the, the moment that I have the, the bit of anxiety is when I'm about to land. That's yeah, when I fair. get it. Cause it's like, because then all the scenes from Die Hard 2. Sure, like, yeah. There's you know, there's a bunch of things explode. that immediately go in my head of like, uh, but I'm then gonna die here, aren't I? Especially, especially feeling the landing. It just doesn't feel right for a second, and then it's like, yeah. no, 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 no. Wait, I'm I'm good. We're it's on like, the ground. No, wait. This is fine. This is how this is supposed to be. Exactly. It's supposed um, to be a bit, you know, fucky. Yeah. So, but yeah, I like flying in general. Fair enough. Uh. Also, thanks for the zombie troll idea. I forgot Orcus was also the deity of undeath. I just defaulted to chaos and the abyss. Well, there you go. Hey, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, of course, it doesn't have to be a zombie. It could be a troll skeleton, and he like regens bones. Could be a ghost Maybe troll, he's got, like a black carapace. Oh yeah, ghost troll. Could be ghost troll cool. as well. Yep. Yeah. Um, all the coins I could need and no arcades. I know, right? Mm. That's like part of the reason why I don't have physical cash is because I can't go to an arcade. I, he lied <laughs> like he lied as easily as he could as he, as breathing like, yep. <laughs> um, the, there's a mall I go to a lot in my dreams so I guess I have that at least there you go <laughs> um, silly boo you didn't know Alejo is a bird I am not a bird <laughs> he's also not your dad I'm not uh, I just in my little void that I have because I am a void person I can fly mm. it's fun um Man. The void is fun. Uh, yeah. Well, it's also a little boring, but you know. <laughs> yeah. That's why I come out well, here. Oh, it's what you make of it. Yeah, exactly. That's why I come out here every day, sometimes. Holy <laughs> shit, these other people are so bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Um, They've been going at these eggs for like 15 minutes. They haven't done any of them. Eggs? I've broken all the eggs in my nest and a heavy nest and a light nest <laughs> in the time it's taken them to do this. Jeez. And they're still not done. <laughs> That's crazy. They are really bad. Anyway, go uh, on. Um, well, I used to. Oh, I there they go. They finished. <laughs> I haven't been dreaming a lot lately. Me too. Um, yeah, me either. That's unfortunate. I haven't had a dream in a while. Yeah. No Rare. nightmares, though. So I rarely dream now. It sucks. Same. I haven't had a nightmare in a very long time, which is nice. I, I yeah. know what will give me those if I get too hot when I'm sleeping. That, ah. will, that will make me, like, and if I have a fever, obviously, but, like, because mm -hmm. I get too hot because of the fever. Um, yeah. Uh, I was on a plane recently. I was wondering how much uh, tire do they lose in each landing. Yeah, right? Mm. It does feel like a lot, but it really isn't. <laughs> um, yeah, because those tires are probably some of the strongest tires in the world. Yeah, they gotta be. Other than, like, the tires that you see that are used on, like, giant mining trucks. Yeah, those, those things. Those are probably bigger. Oh, those things are so cool. They're so fucking huge, dude. They're so big. If I was to stand next to one, I would probably faint because that is way bigger than me. <laughs> and it is, like, fucking, that's a lot of rubber. It is. Uh, no, I'm not your dad. God, no. Stop. Uh, Ringe, stop it. <laughs> at this stop point. Stop begging for a father figure, you bitch. <laughs> Uh, Just wait at, for yours to come back with the milk. God. <laughs> ah! It's the cigarettes. God. Either uh, or. Yeah, really. Maybe it's one both or, even. It's one of the other. <laughs> uh, at this point, I would take nightmares over no dreams. <laughs> uh, I don't know about it depends that. Depends on the nightmare for me. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Or open a portal and have no idea where it leads. Every party should feel that burning pain of deciding whether that portal they just opened is safe. Could be a treasure trove, could be the nine hells. Life's all about taking chances, but we all know curiosity killed the cat, or in this case, teleported them to a realm of flesh monsters. And you're. I, uh, well, see, there's an easy solution to that one. You just, oh, if you open the portal and you don't have to step through immediately, you just stick a fucking pole in there. You let it in there for like 10 seconds, and if it comes back like a fucking. Charred. just disintegrates into ash, yeah. then uh, you don't go through. Yeah. Like, Come on now. <laughs> I. <sighs> I think the better thing is to utilize portals. Yes. Because I don't think portals are used very much at all, in fact. Mm -hmm. um, I've used them. Yes, you a have. A lot. Yes, many and times. And you guys. Yes. <laughs> um, 
portals are and it depends on how your world is set up but portals could be something that is more um more rare or less rare depending but the the really rare ones of like ooh we've been trying to find a portal that can connect from here to here for ages because we know that it's somewhere around here the ancient texts state mm. that it's someone built the portal fucking the webway is out there man i promise yeah right um <laughs> or like, you know, parts of the webway that aren't fucked. Yes, that aren't <laughs> right next to the Golden Throne. It's fine. Um, yeah, just stay uh, near the Golden Throne. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it could it could be as, as something like that, or it could be as simple as we created a, 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 a portal that can go from here to the other town because it's just, it's safer, you know? like mm -hmm. and And then you have the whole, like, well... Is the outside world more overgrown? Is it more vicious because of that? You know, they've they've been are they neglecting back. like keeping the outside world safe? Because yeah, exactly. They've they've beaten they've been beaten back into their cities so much that they literally had to create different ways to travel. So is it like are people that go out into the actual wilds are they like more renowned because they can bring back things that no one else can get because they survived those uh, treks? Now, um, you know what? I'm surprised this has come up now because hmm. of that. Um, the game Tales of Vesperia <laughs> um, has this thing where their world is fucking full of monsters. Mm. And, like, you can't go out there into the wild without being, like, actually really prepared to fight. Mm. Um, and so every major city and village and town has a barrier around it. Mm. And so the only people that go out into the wild are people that you remember Tales of Symphonia where you had X spheres and that was the reason why the main characters could fight so well. Uh, yeah. Um, you have their equivalent of that yeah. where you have this thing that makes you actually able to fight and take on monsters and use arts and shit. And these things are rare and expensive and not uh, everybody has them. Okay. So like the military has them and like, organizations have them but standard people do not have access to them at all gotcha so going out into the wild is kind of a privilege and so there's a lot of the world that remains unexplored and shit okay and so that just kind of made me think of that and yeah, it's yeah, another yeah. interesting way to do that where yeah. the towns are uh safe as long as the barrier doesn't fail yeah um in which case uh good luck yeah, exactly because now uh... you're just in a fucking you know you're fenced in <laughs> yeah. Um uh that's a good joke, Boo. My father actually is buying food for the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh now nah, when I wake up from a nightmare, my first thought is always, oh, just a dream, followed by, oh, y'all just done fucked up. Hey, mm. if you can lucid dream, that's great. I've never been oh, able to. Lucky. Never ever. It sucks. <laughs> that would be super cool. The one time I was able to do it, it was only for like the very briefest of moments where I'm like, I'm having a nightmare mm -hmm. and I just stop and be like, this is a dream. I want to wake up. And I woke up. Ah, uh, there've been, that moments, was the one time there've been moments where I've realized that it was a dream while I was having the dream. And then I wake up because yes. I'm like, fuck, because some, yeah. most of those times it's a good dream. Yeah, right. And I'm like, man, like, this, this is, is too great. good to be true. <laughs> this is great. And then I just have the realization of, oh. <laughs> yeah. And then when you try to go back to sleep to get back in there, mm, oh, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. I, I just wake up again and I'm like, yeah. ah, it's six hours later. Fuck. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Oops. At number 25, slaughter something and find out they were A-OK -okay the whole time. Every party will get used to the slashing and the blood and the gore. And then there's the one time. Congratulations, you've defeated the menacing town protector. Oh, they were giving the Heimlich. Oh, you might want to lay low for a while. You thought they were monsters, but they yeah. were just celebrating a little festival. Cue the awkward apologies. So I think a better way to put that as well would be... Um, create like have a misunderstanding right um yeah. just in general because they're like um what was it the i i talked about uh this a while back um but i had a character um in my original first world that could be found as like just a random thing um who uh he was a goblin 
he and his mm -hmm. goblin buds um had been uh basically they had escaped from a dwarven um slave camp um, Ooh, okay. of of goblins because they have they had started to use them as slaves to do mm -hmm. their work instead of doing it themselves and thus kind of you know reaped the benefits um, that because, honestly doesn't sound very dwarfy, but I, I'm about it. Right, exactly. But um, lazy dwarves—that's crazy, right? To me, <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. Uh, I wanted to have a little twist on them, and yeah, um, I like it. And so uh, they st and they were also like, nobody gives a fuck about goblins. Goblins are kind of shit. Um, mm. They they cause a bunch of problems. So why would they give a shit if we did anything with them? And who would believe them? it's true <laughs> you know right yeah so um so he he and his two buds uh had escaped and he was very grievously injured um and so his two buds if the party were to come by um they would try to steal from the party to try to steal medical supplies ah, um okay and if the party uh you know it like basically saw them because they would be relying heavily on sneaking um, mm. they would retreat they away. They would see some goblins sneaking up on them to steal from them. Yeah, they would try to retreat away, and if they get killed, well, uh, well <laughs> you know, uh-oh. Uh, you didn't ask. You didn't ask. Um, but <laughs> I it, thought they were bad. It never came up. <laughs> basically, basically, if they got killed, they would probably hear the crying in the distance of uh, a goblin in pain. Um, and if they mm. let them live and then went, Hey, what the fuck are you doing? They'd be like, I just gotta get healing for my goblin guy. <laughs> and then, ah. uh, uh, they would find out about him and, uh, him trying to, um, reclaim basically the, the underground for goblins yes. and to get free his goblin people. And, you mm -hmm. know, he would, he was, uh, uh, a heir to the goblin throne and all this kind of stuff. Nice. Um, See now... If you want to have that situation, the, an easy way to get the players to actually, like, engage with the goblin is to have the goblin that does the stealing be a girl. Easy. Uh, potentially. It depends, right? I think it's because most of the time they wouldn't want to attack the woman outright. Mm. Because if they, because if the goblin snuck up on them and didn't try to just shank them, they may be a little bit more interested. Well, that's, they, they wouldn't try to shank them. That's the thing. These these goblins oh, okay. just don't. They they literally go up. If they get caught, they try to run away. Like okay. that's it. Like they don't have weapons on them. They are literally in like tattered skins. You know, oh, like they okay. look like shit. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like even for goblins, they look Ugh. like shit. Um. So that's I, not what Rule Thirty Four told me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, you know, but I uh, it's a little different. <laughs> it's a little. This is it's a tad different. Um, yeah. Uh, the other alternative, uh, the other situation that I thought about having was just having one of them just jump out onto the road and just like point a knife at them, like a solitary goblin, like yes. that looked like shit and point a knife at them and say, give me medicine. And that's mm. it. Right. And then they would decide what to do at that point. Cause if mm. they kill him, that's it. Well, you know, he's yeah, dead. But like, if they think about it for like two seconds, they go. I was like, "Why is a goblin what specifically the fuck? asking us for medicine? This yeah, is weird." Exactly. So. And why just one? Yeah. So you know, one of those kinds of things, just to try mm. to shake it up and make it a situation that actually makes you go, "Huh?" Yeah. <laughs> um. Not lucid dream. Just use my imagination while I'm awake, like a vengeful god. Oh, you mean after ah. the fact? <laughs> Ah, I see. Fair enough. Um, dreams are cool, but insomnia stops me at times. That is fair. I understand that entirely. Yes. Not Cue me, thankfully. Mm. At number 26, set up camp and forget to set a watch. This one is especially common at higher levels because, let's face it, having that double-digit level on your character sheet just starts to make you feel like gods. But nothing wakes you up faster than an uninvited goblin trying to nab your coin purse. Hey! Or one assassin. You were wow. saying? Whoa, hey. <laughs> Wowie! <laughs> and that promised to get revenge and newsflash, that's tonight. A night under the stars, an ambush at dawn. Really should have seen that coming. And finally... I... Not setting a watch. Have that be something that should happen to you. I... Eh? Yeah, eh, it's I mean, something that you just have to do. Eh. Like, yeah. I, I don't I, get it. I don't, I don't understand. get the, the whole, you should have this happen. Like, yeah, I... <sighs> 
essential experiences, I guess, just means in this case, something that you should experience at some point, right? Which, mm. uh, again, I mean, eh? again, like this whole time, it's just been like, uh, eh, eh, you know, yeah, may- maybe, I guess, if you want it to, sure. Mm. Um, but not everything is going to turn out exactly the same way. So, uh, yeah. Um, even with this, like, I don't know any person that when they're out in the wilds in- with their character, they go, okay, guys, we'll just go to sleep. It'll mm. be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Because they either go, I have alarm. I'll cast that and just put it all the way around us and we'll be fine for eight hours. It'll be okay. Or, okay, guys, let's find a good place to, like, hide out and sleep so that we aren't seen by anybody. Or let's set up a watch. Okay, I'll take two hours. You take two hours. You take two hours. You take two hours and we'll be fine. It'll be great. Yeah. You know, like, there's always... They always are going to be so paranoid because... They 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 need to not be attacked by something. They need to not be stolen from. All that kind of stuff. Like it always mm. goes through their heads. Yes, it'll go through my head every time too. Mm. <laughs> Just in general, in day to day, man, yeah. I don't want to be stolen. I gotta from set a watch for when I sleep. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I set my watch to wake me up at uh, whenever I need to go into work. Yeah, exactly. Da, 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 da. <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, uh, but. What hap- What will make this happen sometimes is if you have run them ragged to a point of, okay, they need to take watch, and now, oh, hey, could you roll me a constitution to see if you can stay up mm-hmm. for your watch? Or can you uh, roll me a, uh, a search check or a spot check to see if you can see anything while you're on watch? Oh, mm-hmm. you did. Oh, you got a four. Uh, you- everything looks fine to me, buddy. Yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah. see anything. Right? So, like, those are the ways that that kind of still pays off without them not setting a watch. Um, because, again, they will never not set a watch <laughs> in, yeah. of some sort. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I've Again, it, it's a, an anomaly to me that you would ever meet a party that is so laid back that they're like, eh, fuck it, it'll be fine. Um, yeah, because the, the high-level thing that he mentioned doesn't really even matter because... If you do that, you're just going to you're just going to throw stronger shit at them. Yeah, exactly. To make up for it. Yeah, it's literally like the point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you get to those higher levels to have stronger things out there. Yeah. The only times where they don't do the watch thing is usually when they know they are safe. Yeah. And then so, like, you... they won't do it in the inn. Yeah, exactly. So. Eh. And then if you ambush them in the end, it's just kind of weird. Yeah. Well, then it's like something that's actually important usually. Yeah. There's like a guy who came in to try to steal from you while you were in an inn. That's yeah. weird. Why? Yeah, that's fucking weird. Right? So then you start a whole different thing. Yeah. Um, oh, fuck. Damn it. Those goblins could try to find a kind troll group to live in. They could have. Uh, yeah. Or they could wind up like Grom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want that. <laughs> Don't want that. Um, want three Groms. <laughs> uh, hashtag not all goblins. That's right. My goblin mm. boys. <laughs> I miss those little guys. <laughs> really should have seen that coming. And finally, at number 27, give up on a puzzle and just try to smash through the door. Bludgeoning through the campaign is possible if you're a murder hobo, and sometimes brute force is the answer. Let's be real, that intricate, riddle-crafted door was just asking for it. Anyways, there you have it, 27 things. It's... sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Eh. It's just another way to solve the puzzle. That's all I yes. see it as. Yeah. Things every party should experience thank you guys so much for watching leave a comment down below if you think i forgot something or if there's some other iconic thing that you think every party should experience as always for john my friends and we'll see you next time adventurers yeah that's fine it's fine i mean it's literally yeah, it's... i don't agree with the title but <laughs> yeah other than that i mean it's yeah it's just 27 things Really? Yeah, it's just 27 <laughs> kind of classic things that might occur in a TTRPG, like exactly. fantasy specifically, yeah. usually. Yeah, exactly. It's just, like I said, 27 things. Yeah. Neat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 27 things that can happen. Yes, exactly. Uh, 
Cog would totally just eat the puzzle. There you go. Um, yeah, I mean, what can you say? What can you say? I guess if it gives inspiration to anybody, nice, good. Yeah. You know? Um, that's all. That's all I can say. Okay. Well, <laughs> the twenty-seven mm. things of all time. That's right. Yes. All right. Well, <laughs> let's move on to the second video. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, this one is about rain specifically. Okay. It's like six I like minutes rain. as a dungeon master. Yeah, rain is pretty good. Um, yeah, rain's nice. Except and... when it makes everything fucking humid. Yeah. Um, so, this is Make Your D&D Games Better with Rain, Transforming Encounters and Atmospheres, DM and GM Tips. This is brought to us by the Guildmaster Guides. I'm oh, sorry, the Guildmaster's Guides. Um, so, uh, in general, I mean, we've talked about weather before a little bit. Um, mm. weather is good to have as a, uh, a, a random, uh, modifier to things. Um, mm. It's good to promote atmosphere. It's good to um, make it so that travel could be uh, affected. Yeah, um, a bit more dynamic, different. Yeah. Um, like we were saying with uh, the travel between the archipelagos, one of the things you could do if you don't want them to be able to travel through the air sometimes is say, some storm has come into the, like, in, in the flight path, and we can't really fly through that it would be bad for the airship so we're actually mm -hmm. keeping them down for today uh you're gonna have to take a boat and yeah. uh-oh taking the boat you also probably gonna have to go through that storm but it can at least go around real easy mm. um the airways i mean we could go around but that would cost us you know that would a cost lot us more a lot. and it, this is already expensive yeah, you don't want that so, and neither do we yeah because insurance is a bitch on airships that's right uh so um utilizing weather is good um mm -hmm. let's see about ways to do it hey with rain as a dungeon master have you ever wanted to take your encounters campaigns general setting and the enhance next them level? and use something simple well i oh. always look for things to help enhance my game that, that are just beyond the mechanics of the game and today how can we make rain something so simple make your game feel so epic so let's talk about how to make rain an integral part or an interesting part of your campaign setting. Let's get into it. Okay. Jesus. A little loud. Yeah, a little much. My the God. first thing about rain in D&D is you should be using it. It can affect your campaigns, it can affect your encounters, but more importantly, there is a mechanical side of it. So the mechanical side of rain, number one, making difficult terrain. As the water mm. hits the ground, it try to run on wet surfaces, especially, well, it makes it slippery. So dex checks. Also, lack of visibility. All of a sudden, you can only see 30, 60, 90 feet, allowing monsters to show up. This makes way very effective, especially on mindless monsters. There's a mechanical It makes aspect. what? I, I, I missed that. No, I. Th it makes waves more effective. Is that what I, you said? I don't know. Let's see. Especially, well, it makes it slippery. So dex checks. Also, lack of visibility. All of a sudden, you can only see 30, 60, 90 feet, allowing monsters to show up. This makes wave very effective, especially on mindless. I wave. Is that a spell or something? Maybe. Hold on. Uh, five e wave. It is a thing. Okay. Uh, I would kind of wish you would specify it makes the spell wave. No, it's the item? Oh, it's that item that was the trident, if you remember from that one thing. You mean that legendary item? Y yeah, I don't know if that's what he means. I sure hope not. <laughs> Hold on. Because I... that's ridiculous. Hold Let's on. have rain specifically so our players can use wave better if we they even well, have it. Uh, is Rockwin Okay, 
uh, is, yeah, am I missing something? Does it cause rain? Is that why? I don't think so, but uh, it sounded like way to me. Maybe. Hold on. Yeah, I, but like that doesn't even, that applies even less. Yeah. I, hold on. <laughs> Check. It's weird. Also, lack of visibility. All of a sudden, you can only see 30, 60, 90 feet, allowing monsters to show up. This makes Wave very effective, especially on mindless monsters. There's wave. I have no effective. idea. I'm very confused. Yeah, let's. I think let's just move on. Well, I, I don't just, think we're going to parse anything from that. Oh. I just want to see if there is something that I'm missing on uh, Pulse Wave? No, that's he would have said pulse wave. Let me read this one more time of um wave itself. Because if it just says that you can create rain with it, like yeah. that that would make more sense, right? Um But I mean if you can create rain with wave, why does having rain make it more effective if you can already just make it? Well, it makes wave more effective because you can create rain. That's what he's saying. Oh, 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 I yeah, see what yeah, you're yeah, saying. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I thought I, it was like, it's more effective in the rain. No, I don't yeah. think so. Um, yeah, I don't see it saying that you can do that with it, so I'm not sure. So yeah. I guess let's move on, because that's yeah. very strange. Yeah, <laughs> can barely tell. I want to take my leveling to the next level. <laughs> yeah, God, I... Oh. You want to take your blank to the next level? Then do this. Yeah, it's, I, it's so such an overused sick of that phrase. Yeah, it's it's overused. It's because they're trying to get the gamers to do things. That's yeah. what they're trying to do, and it's so annoying. Do you want to level up your fucking your blank experience? Yep. Do it, this. Yep. Exactly. Because gaming is cool now. So hey. yeah, dude. <laughs> uh. Because in my world, troll can just eat anything, including rocks, metal, and stuff, so they can't go hungry. That makes sense. Yeah. Ah, that's cool. Um, I bet dwarves fucking hate them. They probably do. <laughs> uh, go, Machamp, use way. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, I don't... The mechanical yeah. aspect of rain, that it can actually affect your game, such as difficult terrain, visibility, making things like holding onto your weapon's difficulty. If someone blocks an attack, make a dex check, or the weapon slips from your hand. So, okay, um, now I, I, I like the idea of it creating difficult terrain. I like the idea of it making so, uh, its visibility is lessened and potentially even, um, it makes, uh, firing arrows harder, right? Um, yes. that makes sense to me and all that. Um, with the slipperiness of weapons in your hands, potentially, but yeah, I, I would be careful with it. Mm -hmm. Is that could get annoying really fast, I yes. think. Um if it was if it was utilized in a way of like it's raining and then somebody uses an ice spell on you to do that, then I would be like, ooh, okay, we can have some kind of uh things happening because they used a ray of frost on you. Um mm. now you now there is like it is frosty. It's covered in frost. Um mm -hmm. And it'll be that way for a little bit because it's magical for us. So it'll last like a round or so. So if you do use it, then, uh-oh. Ooh, it's slippery. Ooh. Yeah. Um, uh-oh. That would be fine to me because then it's just a modifier that can be applied because of the interactions between the element and something that you can do or the <laughs> enemy can do, right? Um, the other thing that I would do is when he is saying if you block an attack, it makes it so that you do it. I would have it so that you need to fail the roll by a certain amount. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, for example, in Devils and Dice, we have the snails, the low car coals, I think yes. they are. Yeah. There's a mechanic that I made up where they're all slimy and sticky because they're giant snails. Yes. And if you, f if you roll anything like a... Um, if you, let's see, yeah, no, if it was a one to like five, a one to five natural, yeah, then your weapon would get stuck in the slime. Yes. And you'd have to like use a strength check to pull it out. Yes. Exactly. And so it can happen, but only if you roll really poorly. It's not just any miss. Yeah, exactly. Making it so that it's less guaranteed, 
is yes but it's still a chance right yeah yeah because that's kind of a big deal to all of a sudden be in a fight and all of a sudden you don't have your weapon that's kind of huge yeah yeah there are lots of little bitty things and little mechanical aspects you can add when using rain you should be doing these Let's talk about the non-mechanical side of this. Rain can be used as a storytelling device as well. Imagine the players are basically working on a heist or trying to go to the market or trying to do something in a town and all of a sudden it starts raining. What happens when it rains? Everyone goes inside. All of a sudden the cover of people the players were gonna hmm. be using is no longer there. All of a sudden the person they thought was gonna be out, the guards are in different locations. Rain changes the dynamics of whatever encounter you're going to be incurring. And so Rain gives an amazing storytelling device by adding just something that's extra, just something that's little, and you as a dungeon master all of a sudden look like a genius because how did he plan for the rain? I didn't, but it started to rain. You can even forecast basically clouds coming in early on. Maybe the players will try to speed yeah, up okay. their actions to do it before that rain actually occurs, or do they have to wait and the rain starts? Do they use the rain to their advantage because of the decreased visibility? Rain is an amazing thing because it changes the functionality of how people function functionality how people function that changes the dynamics of the story so i love to use rain for this sake as far as changing how and where people will go people are hunkering down inside of inns they may meet someone they wouldn't have met because they rush in from outside of the rain nobody likes to be wet except for players because we can use it as a mechanical advantage yeah i mean th that's a great a great point um mm. i didn't even think of that <laughs> i've i've i mean i i like being out in the rain myself um mm on occasion there are days where i would just go and i'm like ah. <laughs> but yeah most of the time i'm like yeah this is fine um yeah especially if it's a lighter kind of rain um, yeah don't really want don't not super into just getting soaked for getting soaked sake but yeah. it's certainly not the worst exactly um so but it, it it absolutely does do this it in in any setting really the rain can do this for everybody um yes and hell if you want it to be in, you know, uh, high fantasy, low fantasy, sci-fi, um, post-apocalyptic, all that kind of stuff, um, the rain can then change depending on the setting itself. This rain mm. here is regular rain. This rain here is acidic. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> this... Maybe the in depending on the area that you're in, it can be different. You could be in a yes. volcano and it rains there and it's black yeah. because of all the soot and ash in the atmosphere. Yes, actually, be all absolutely. spooky, scary. Yeah, um, and thus it changes entirely um, the the interaction with the the visibility thing that you've already established. Of oh, it takes away visibility. Oh, uh oh, this rain is even worse. You know, mm -hmm. um. And especially I like the um, forecasting it beforehand of... With clouds. Yes, clouds. Days before or day before or somebody... You have your weatherman out there going, Hey, man, it's going to rain tomorrow. Fuck. Uh, mm. <laughs> I hope you don't need to go outside a lot. And then it's like, ah... <laughs> we yeah. were gonna go outside a lot fuck oh god damn uh, why did you do this to me weatherman uh, yeah. you controller of the weather I know it's you uh, yeah why can you just fucking tell it to go away yeah god um, all you had to say was that it's not gonna rain <laughs> why didn't you do that <laughs> um so yeah it's it's great for utilization in that way I, I absolutely 100% agree um if you're in Spain, it will fall mainly on the plane. Hey, hmm. there you go. <laughs> uh, I sat out on my porch during a tornado. That was fun. Whoa. Ooh. That well, sounds you. extremely terrifying. Yep, fuck that. I would rather not. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually, my boss actually had a tornado kind of actually affect his house. Like ripped oh, fucking roof and stuff uh, and shattered windows. You and uh, uh, what? Where was this? Uh, this was down here in, in Virginia. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, For, yeah. Uh, I didn't know this was a recent one or a long time no, ago. No, 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 no. I was about to say, in Maine? Tornadoes no. in Maine? <laughs> no, that's never happened, thank God. Yeah, that's why I was surprised <laughs> first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, it even it even uh, it even knocked down some trees as he was going outside, uh, to see what was going on, and it knocked down trees like both cross sectioned onto his new car. <laughs> it's fucking windy out here, huh? Fucking, fucking bad. Fucking windy. 
Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, if a tornado doesn't look like it's moving, it's moving towards you. Yes. Uh, three hit on the other side of town, but weather was still wild. Yeah. Yeah, there was a tornado warning in my area. Um, I want to say like a month or two. No, it was quite a while ago, actually. I was still an intern. Fuck. It was a while ago, but we had to like go into the tornado shelters and everything at work. <laughs> no, nothing. It never touched down, so it didn't actually happen. So that was good. But um, That's good. in my area, I literally was looking on my doorbell cam and uh, and it was dark and fucking rainy and everything. And I was like, Jesus, those clouds are moving fast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they were probably green. No, they weren't. Um, oh, yeah. That's the worst. That. Yeah. D- I, ugh, when I was younger, a long yep. time ago, I saw green clouds. Holy shit. Mm. They are ridiculously scary to I, me. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. It's fucking unnatural, dude. Mm-hmm. Um, I, even though it's incredibly natural, I guess. Yeah, it's natural, but fuck, dude. It does not look natural. Exactly. Um, I wish I had a tornado shelter at work. That's, hey, fair. Mm. If you have a basement, that's at least something. Yeah. Ours is a whole manufacturing plant, so it kind of has to have them, because otherwise, the, we're fucked. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be out in the rain. Another thing rain can do for you in the Dungeons & Dragons campaign is change the terrain. If the players go somewhere yes. across a bridge that's small, and all of a sudden it comes down pouring rain, that rain can wash away that bridge. Now the players have to find mm. a different way back. The river is now rushing, the bridge is now gone, how do I get back to where I'm going? Or if they're following tracks and it starts pouring down rain and the rain washes away the tracks that they're Mm. following. Now, Mm. further down the road, if they encounter the tracks again, now it's deep into the mud. But the bottom line is, is that rain can change the terrain uh, that your players are encountering. Interesting to note, um, actually, in... It's either in the DMG or it's in the player's handbook, one of them, uh, when it refers to tracking. um, I don't know if it's in 5e's, to be fair. Uh, It's it might be um but when it refers to tracking uh it does say if it has rained recently or if it is raining there is a um negative to your role because mm. obviously it's raining it's raining yeah it's taking away that track that you're looking for so mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> no basement either i'm just fucked oh well oh. i'm sorry don't go to work <laughs> yeah jesus uh <laughs> Uh, I could get in a ditch and hope I don't drown or get struck by lightning. True. Mm. <laughs> well, at least the lightning will be quicker. Or you'll wake up with a fucking badass scar and a story. Yeah, exactly. Oh, if it wasn't for it. fucking painful and horrible, I would love that. <laughs> I don't know if it is. I think it is, actually. It can be very uh, painful. Uh, well, then but... just don't get struck by a painful one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, come on. <laughs> you have the option. Come on. Yeah, that's you know true. That. Yeah, I forgot. And so, therefore, it can change how players need to get to somewhere or return from somewhere. And I'm a big fan of changing what we thought was going to happen and using something that gives a little bit of realism to it. The best part about this is forecasting it. You could even say the storm is coming up on the horizon. The players know that that happens. The bridge they crossed was way too, well, rickety to withstand a good rainstorm. So how would you use rain to change the trajectory of your players. I wouldn't. (laughs) In fact, fuck that. Fuck Um, rain. (laughs) Fuck the weather. Yeah. It's always dry. (laughs) Turns out this is just the lead up to a fucking Mad Max campaign. Ooh. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. Well, that's a thing, right? Like it it could be a thing. Literally in your campaign. Yeah. Uh it hasn't rained in months. Anywhere. Weird. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> That's fucking weird. Yet we still have an ocean. I don't get it. What's going on? Yeah. What's going on here? Why <laughs> why why that? What uh, the hell is even that? What the hell is even that? Um <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I really like the idea <clears throat> uh the idea of um washing away bridges, small things yes. like um it could affect small towns as well, things that aren't developed as well, um, like bigger cities, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that happens in real life all the time. Fucking uh, just down the road, fucking it can flood if uh, if it rains too hard, you know? Like, mm. it's just a thing that happens. Um, and thus, 
even the consequences of the rain happening could create opportunities for you and your players um, uh, to like help the town out, gain favor, gain gold, all that kind of stuff, um, mm-hmm. become mercenaries, but for the public well-being, you know, they're, they're uh, contractors, that's the word. Yes. <laughs> you know, they're <laughs> digging ditches for the future for them to divert this rain or, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's very menial stuff, but it's stuff that you can utilize if you do what we said beforehand of, like, utilizing a system of more than just gold as your reward doing favors mm-hmm. and stuff and, and opinion and prestige and respect, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, mm-hmm. Utilizing that to then uh, become more well-liked in the town, have that spread as a story to other people. These people, when they go to places, they literally help people, like, more than you would think, actually. You can they just ask them. They do fucking public works shit. It's, <laughs> it's crazy, actually. It's really Why the weird. Fuck? Why do they yeah. do that? <laughs> it, I, I like it, but at the same time, like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who does that? Um, and then you have a reputation that you can, like, precede you, literally. Um, mm-hmm. and, and perhaps that uh, creates more opportunities with lords, or it could create more opportunities with those of more nefarious means who are like, hey, you guys, like, are liked by Thanks. everybody. You, you guys fix that bridge. We don't like that. Yeah. We decided. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, or uh, literally... And next town over, I mean, you guys could just sell this shit for us if you could. Because, um, mm-hmm. I mean, they'll trust you. Yeah. <laughs> like, they don't trust us. They don't trust Why's us. That? No reason. <laughs> <laughs> no reason. That's a good question. Anyway, could you yeah. do this? I'll give you money. <laughs> <laughs> um, How much money? Enough. Enough. You got yeah. It. <laughs> fucking, you fucking got it. <laughs> That's so. why you're the best. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it can give you a whole bunch of opportunity. Um, picture heavy thunder flashing, lighting, lightning uh, buckets of rain, and a dude on a porch laughing his ass off. There you go. So literally the meme of the guy sitting in the fucking lawn, white lawn chair in the storm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I nice. love that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh. Just scratch the scar into yourself and say it was lightning. Mm, no, I'm good. Yeah, no thanks. Um, uh, why not play in the boggy swamp from Jack and Daxter One, where it never stops raining? Mm. Oh man, I miss. That or game. just play in a swamp where it's just always, you know, or a rainforest. I yeah. think a rainforest would be more appropriate, not yeah. because it's a well, I mean, not not appropriate, more interesting. Not because it's a rainforest and it has to be raining, but right. just because rainforests are not used very often. That's true. That's true as well. Yeah. I've literally never seen like an actual play or anything like that where anyone ever goes to a rainforest or a jungle like that. Uh, in it's always like a tropical like island jungle, not this kind of like yeah. dense. You make you travel like two miles a day kind of jungle. Yeah. Um. In um. I was listening to um. Fuck, what is it called? Get in the trunk. Um, from uh, oh fuck me, the the it's an actual play. Twenty. Nope. Uh, it's fuck. Why can't I remember? I was literally talking. To, they're the Delta Green one that I listen to on occasion. Oh, okay. Uh, um, fuck. I rem- I seem to remember the name. But I don't yeah. know it off the top of my head. Anyway, uh, a glass cannon. Glass cannon. Glass right. cannon. That's it. Yeah. Um, oh, one of the fucking Christ. One of the things that they they did. Uh, they went to. Um, I think it was Mexico. Okay. Um, and so they had to go through jungle and stuff. Oh, your stuff. homeland. <laughs> There's no jungles in Mexico. Yeah, there is. <laughs> in Mexico? Yeah. It's a desert. What are you talking about? What? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, they went through an agave jungle, I see. <laughs> no, it Disgusting. was uh, closer to the Yucatan, so uh, jungles and stuff, right? Um, yes, yes. And, uh, unfortunately there wasn't much, like, it took them longer because they had to, right? Um, but there wasn't much, like, that was really done with it, but that was the only time that I've actually seen that as something that's happened. Okay, um, that's in good. A, in a campaign, so I was like, ooh, um, that's neat, you don't see that yeah. a lot. But yeah. Love the other thing rain. that's really fun about doing jungles, sorry, I don't mean to cut no, you No, you're good, you're um, absolutely good. The... Jungles are even in real life are home to some of the most heinous shit 
in the yeah. world. So, like, you can go, like, full Catacan with yeah. jungles if you want to. Man. Yeah, they're fucked. I'd want, on the one hand, fucking cool. On the other hand, fuck that. Yeah, oh, 100%. I'm, I'm never going there. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> in the game, I'll go there all the time. My character won't like it, but I'll go yeah. there all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Um, Go to rainforest, get swarmed by mosquitoes, catch malaria. Yes. Yeah. Or get eaten by cannibalistic halflings. Yes. Yes. Uh, fun fact: a fair amount of eastern Midwestern or er, of the eastern Midwest of America is classified as a temperate rainforest. Yes. Climatology is weird. Yes. I like didn't the old know growth that. forests in uh like Northern California and Washington State. That is a temperate rainforest. Really. Yep. Weird. It's I'm I don't know how many there are in the world. Yeah. I think there's like very, very few of them at the moment. That's so strange. Yeah. Neat though. Yeah, very cool. Here. Another way that I love using rain, and I talked about this earlier, is difficult terrain. Rain is an amazing way to create difficult terrain, not just in overland movement, but also in combat. It affects both. And so the thing is, is that if players are trying to get to somewhere in your campaign, rain can make that track harder, slowing them down. Now, why would we do this? Only to enhance the story. I don't like using rain to create problems for the players unless it's taking the story and projecting it further or enhancing it. Maybe I need them to slow down and find cover, which then gives them a side quest or an NPC they may meet, right? Hmm. The players search drastically for cover and they come across a small hut. How did they know the small hut was going to be there? It doesn't matter where they're at. They were trying to find it. They rolled a survival check. The survival check was high enough. They found the hut. Eh. That's one thing that I love is that I, I can plant things in locations using rain to force the players to create the kind of an action that I may, may know. Now, here's the thing. What if the players don't search for cover? What if the players move on? Well, then we may layer a level of ex exhaustion over the players. Then what? Well, now they're exhausted. Now they need a long rest to get rid of that exhaustion. What happens during that long rest? Whenever we they change sleep. what the players are doing or give them a challenge. Yeah, the other things could happen, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, I guess. But it, I find it very strange that he's like, I don't want to give them difficulties when that's literally all you're that's doing. What you do, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> the kind of the point. You present of... adversities and difficulties for this exact for reason. To, to overcome. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise it's just nothing. Like it's just a dumb way to word it. I know yeah, what he means. Yeah, exactly. Um I so mm, uh the using it to have them find something is fine. Um Yes. I don't mind that. Um the it just depends on like for me I, I it's hard for me to justify um utilizing it for that reason alone of like I want them to go and find this thing you know mm. um yeah. that hut that's on the side of the road right uh they'll find it or they won't in my opinion like it'll yeah. be on the side of the road if while they're traveling i have i say like oh hey uh who's like leading the caravan right now like who's who's up in the front right mm -hmm. um and then i have them roll for it and potentially they spot something in the trees you know um mm -hmm. something like that like sure in that moment if it rains that's the thing of like do i have it rain now like yeah for me weather is hard because i go it's a random thing how do I control it in such a way that feels genuine? Yeah, the thing that I would do is, like, um, whenever I'm, like, let's say your character's resting in an inn. Yeah. Um, you know, you wake up, you're ready for the next adventure, you know, you're ready to go out and do whatever it is yeah. you had already planned to do. You just say, it's gonna rain today. Especially if you had already, like, foreshadowed it with clouds. You know, yeah. you might have it like you know the day before it's like oh it's getting cloudy and then the next day it's going to rain regardless of whatever happens or whatever it does right exactly so that like, way you just make it happen and they just have to roll with it and you just kind of dedicate to making it happen then yeah exactly well that's the other thing of like when do i like when do i want to foreshadow clouds that's the yes. other thing right of like mm -hmm. 
when do I want to foreshadow that it's going to rain? When yeah. does that feel naturally appropriate? Right. Honestly, I would say just kind of whenever you feel like it. It's like, hmm, yeah, this no, is going well. I, Let's switch it up a little bit. I absolutely, yeah, I, I get that 100%, and I would say that for anybody else. For me specifically, my brain mm. is so bad with this because it's like, oh, it, it's it's literally like, how do, how do I justify it to myself, you know? Oh. Yeah. Uh, like, you just... Uh, I, I don't know if this would help you. It would help me. Hmm. You justify it by being the game master. Well, and yeah. And being like, you know. Well, yeah, but at the same time, I also have this weirdness of like, oh, but, uh, d like, how how and, did I, like, I don't and know. And this is your fear of doing shit wrong that you still have. Yes, th yes, there is yes. that as well, for sure. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't know. It's just one of those things that it, it just kind of, it, it loops in my head, right? Yeah, and that's um, fair. And, and you like it's just got to be a thing where you just say it just happens and yeah. you just got to roll oh, with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just something it you would need to kind of uh, I have to force myself to do it. With. Yeah. Yes. I, I have to force myself to do it because otherwise I will go in that loop forever <laughs> oh, or just never do it. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and that's the problem. Right. Yeah. Um. Anyway, because fucking suck it up. So beat a bitch. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh. I guess you can interpret interpret the dice roll as luck factor to explain the hut. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Um, huts everywhere, just waiting for rain to be found. <laughs> mm. Uh, and then they take shelter in the hut for the night and get Blair witched. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, side question. I mean, hell, that'd be interesting. Yeah, it would be. Side question: How's Aiden been? He's fine. Yeah, yeah. he's fine. Yeah. We've been playing Hell Divers. He's just—I uh, think he's still at work at the moment. Yeah, he's been doing work stuff. He's been busy, yeah. and he's been more active like later at night because yeah. work. Uh, yeah. Other than that, completely fine. Yeah, he's good. Uh, I would probably wait. Uh, want to implement a weather chance roll just to remind myself that I can use it. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, mm. that would probably help me out. Uh, there are weather dice, aren't there? Yes. Yeah. So that might actually be the way that I do it. Of like hell. A set of dice that I have is actually food dice. Oh, there you go. Oh, my fucking God. Get in the goddamn hole. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, grenade. Um, yeah, I know. And so it's like, you know, it's a whole bunch of them. It's like, oh, there's grain. So it's like, oh, there's bread. There's pita. There's fucking tortillas mm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it just you roll the dice and be like, what's on the menu tonight? And then there you go. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I, 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 I actually, I really think that getting some weather dice would help me a lot because it's, mm -hmm. it's the tool that's there that I could then be like every now and then I look at it and I go, oh, I could roll that right now. Yeah. Yeah, that would help like, me. I kind of want weather to happen. This will help me choose. Yes. It's the same way where I'm like, sometimes I want to stop somewhere and get some food on the way home from work and yeah. I'll flip a coin. And regardless of the head, regardless of where it lands, it's kind of helping inform my decision. Yeah, yeah. Because if the coin says no and I'm like, yeah okay that's fine or no fuck you i'm gonna get it anyway <laughs> yeah exactly you know it, it just gives you that moment of like okay i've got to commit to one thing or the other and yeah or even if... directly go against it depending yes. on how, how i feel <laughs> exactly exactly um all right we have to think what are some of the outcomes of this challenge and they don't always have to be bad that hut they find doesn't have to be a hansel and gretel hut that hut may introduce them to an alchemist that actually will give them potions because they have a hatred for the duke that the players are going after or the hag that's in the forest that's making the wildlife attack this poor alchemist. There's lots of ways that little bitty things can enhance it where they don't have to be negative consequences. I love messing with my players. I love creating challenges for them. But at the same time, I try to have a but reward in any one of those challenges, including something as simple as rain. So tell me something. How would you use rain in your campaign from a mechanical standpoint? Or how would you use it as a narrative storytelling device to get your players to do something they may not normally do? And how would your players react to rain coming down on them? Would they just trudge through because, hey, we're players and the characters? Well, just because they're miserable doesn't matter. Or would they respond to trying to find cover because the rain's coming down so hard? I'm curious how your game would handle this. And as always, guys, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And welcome to the wilderness, because I'll be shooting out here for even longer than I thought. <laughs> and again, we will see you next time. So loud, you're mixing. Yeah, it's very loud. God damn. You just got to work on your mixing, bud. But other than that, I mean, I'm cool with your video. Yeah. There we go. There you I go. Got... That was... Oh, and hey, there's more about rain. Huh.
Oh, and the recommended rain. stuff? Yeah, rain is your friend in D&D. Four ways to use rain. Oh, no, that's that's what this is. Oh, that's what this one is. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, that's what this one is. Uh, yeah, so that was the Guild Master's Guides. I think that was fine. Yeah, it was completely nothing, fine. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um... I would get carried away and implement air masses. <laughs> air masses? These are my fronts. This is the cold front. This is the warm oh, front. Oh, yes. They're <laughs> going over the world. Yeah, you yep. could. <laughs> and you have just actual, a complete actual weather system would you be could. fucking crazy. That'd and be a awesome. Nightmare to manage. Yeah, oh, it would be the worst, but it would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, the alchemist. It's like potions. running 20, 20 bees or was. <laughs> That's right. that. Yes. Uh, no, the alchemist potions turn you to gingerbread. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah. pretty good videos today. Yeah. Yeah. I always preferred reptile to rain. <laughs> ah, da, 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 da. Yes. Good one. Lore time. Yes. Lore time. Okay. Well, those are the two videos today. Pretty, yeah. pretty decent. Yeah. Um, lots to talk about as well, which is nice. Um, instead of just going, mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, right? That's actually shit to say. Yeah, it's good. It's and good. And nothing like horrible. Just yeah. one that's like, yeah, you don't have to. Yes, exactly. It wasn't bad. It was just, oh, look at these things you can do. Neat. Yeah. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> but we were able to discuss them, which is nice. So, comment time. Wah! Um, these are comments from Wah! two weeks Sorry. <laughs> Wah! Uh, these are comments from two weeks ago. And, uh, and because we haven't done an episode in a little while. So, uh, mm -hmm. thank you for comments, of course. Uh, this one's from Timothy on last week's, uh, running small and large group games. Uh, he's got one with a child. Oh my goodness. It's disgusting. It's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be big, a little bigger than usual. Here we go. I don't like child. <laughs> child comment, dude. It's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, hello, bros. Hello. Uh, this was an interesting topic to cover. I thought of an idea after the show that kind of builds on a thing I said in chat. In terms of large groups, uh, let's use 11, for example. One DM, five party members, and five players as non-party characters. The extra five can come in and, uh, out acting like NPCs, but still role-playing like the others, either helping or hurting the main party as a game goes on, even fighting the main party in big boss battles if they want. One of the non-party members could even be the big bad guy of the story, or the big good guy if the main party wants to be the bad guys. Uh, mm. This may be a lot to run, but if you have a big group, it seems like a fun way to do it. Uh, one cool dynamic of this can be the two parties don't know everything about each other, having to learn thing, uh, learn about things, what everyone wants, what their powers and skills are, etc. Or lore below. That would be fucking funny because it would be instead of a big bad evil guy, it's the big good evil guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. Um, I like the idea. Um, yeah. it, it might work. I don't know. Um, it's something that it's like, it's like if I wanted to um run a game and I wanted to recruit people that these guys didn't know to like voice certain characters at at times and like mm -hmm. pull them into the game every now and then to be like, so this is who you're talking to. <laughs> yeah. Not just me, it's also this person. I've given them the rundown of the character that they are playing as and what they can do and what they will do and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And it would be interesting. It'd be super cool. I'd like yeah. that. Um if only we had more friends. <laughs> yeah, and if only those friends that we don't have had the time to actually like yes. do stuff. Exactly. Even we are it's hard to even do us. Yes. Unfortunately. Now, anyway. Yeah. Unfortunately, time is not a thing that works for everybody, unfortunately. Yeah. So, um anyway, lore. Mm. Uh the log of alabaster entry 6. It oh, took we're me back to the tree. Yes. It took me about two hours to make the fire venom. When I gave it to Massimo, he felt better very quickly. The standard reaction happened after he drank it. His skin heated up and smoked a bit. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Massimo gave me a hug after he got it, almost crushing me. I was able to make 20 large jars of fire venom, which should last a good amount of time. The next day, we packed our things into a the cart and started on the path back to Moorworth, uh, Targasis heading back with us. As we 
uh, went, me and Targasis, uh, Targasis and I, thank you, <laughs> uh, did some catch up on various topics. I told him about my training uh, with Talithorn and learned he was just as hard on Targ Targasis during the test as he was with me. Oh, as he was with me, sorry. Um, Targasis. <clears throat> he made me battle standing on lava rocks against high level oh fire elementals. It's nice to old know my old friend still has his edge. Uh, I asked why Targasis didn't fight during the Demon War, and why he stayed away for so long after it ended. I got tired, and really needed to clear my head. Eighty years of being challenged by my own family for power took a toll on me. My son dueled me over forty times, and losing to me so much made him go mad. Later, dying to a beholder in a vain attempt to prove himself. Oh. Oof. Ooh. Rip. Uh, I was sad from his death, yes, but I couldn't help being glad he died after seeing what he became. Mm. When he died, the rest of the family blamed me for his death, leading to my grandson trying to get revenge for his father. <laughs> Jeez. Mm. I ended up killing him with a powerful fireball. <laughs> Just wanted the fighting to stop. Wah! Yeah, <laughs> um, Jesus. Leroy, well, I guess that's where my dad's old ramblings about you being a jerk came from. Targasis, Talithorn was the only one I could talk to over the years, and when uh, Cyrus and Veronica were born, I was surprised that they didn't really care about my past. They still wanted glory, but didn't seek my death in order to claim it. And when you started growing up, Leroy, you didn't care about fame at all, which finally gave me some hope for the future. Leroy, well... Here's some good, uh, some news for for you. Uh, Talithorn told me Cyrus became a director while you were, uh, when you were away. Uh, Targasis. And I bet Talithorn is hating it. Yes, indeed. We both laughed. Targasis. Uh, if you are going to be more active in family matters, Leroy, you should know about your sister's husband. And who might that be? Galvin, is he hot? I rolled my eyes at Galvin. What? Just asking. Targasis. For a dragon, I guess his looks are fine. Veronica enjoys him a lot. Uh, that's without a doubt. Galvin. Damn good for her. <laughs> um, Targasis. He is a pink dragon named Cornell. The king of the Moon Valley Kingdom. As Targasis told me about Cornell's story... I wasn't really all that shocked. Leroy. Veronica was known for her intelligence and intensity. It makes sense a dragon is one of the only beings that can keep up with her. I guess I look forward to meeting him. Targasis. He can be your greatest friend or your worst enemy. And trust me... He can be your angle or your devil. <laughs> and trust me, you want to be his friend. <laughs> well, that's all I got. Have a nice day. Thank you. I liked that. That was that was sad. <laughs> <laughs> I felt very bad for Targasis. <laughs> that fucking sucks, man. But I like it. I like it a lot. Thank you. Um The big good evil guy, Gendo Ikari. Oh yep. <laughs> uh, maybe He's I should the dad say from uh what's it called? Neon Genesis Evangelion. Ah, uh, maybe I should say the big evil good guy. <laughs> um, I am good. I am goodbye, but that does not mean I am a good guy. Oh, I am a good guy, but that does not mean I am a good guy. Mm. Yes, exactly. Putting it the other way around. Um, and Lux with a very short comment. Oh my, oh my god. god. Uh. Today's comment is paid for by no one, makers of nothing. Do you have a problem you don't know how to solve? Or maybe you do know, but you just don't want to do it? Try doing nothing. Doing nothing <laughs> requires no effort on your part and can be finished instantly in zero easy steps. I'm so confident in nothing that I'm willing to give it my personal guarantee. If you're not completely satisfied, I'll let you keep nothing for free. No oh need God. to call or order online. Simply do nothing right now and you'll receive nothing immediately at no cost. That's uh, awesome. Asterisk. 
Uh, you won't find a better, better deal on nothing anywhere. Uh, in parentheses, the asterisk. By doing nothing, you consent to everything. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, no lore this week. <laughs> Thank you, Lux. Very good. Very good. Uh, <laughs> oh, good. The sadness was what I was going for. Good. Yeah, no, I like it, because it fucking sucks having your uh, your your family go mad and, of course, then revenge against you from more of your family and then more and more, uh, beholder death for mm. <laughs> to be shown or uh, to, to try to be taken in the same uh, respect, with the same respect. Fuck. Mm. <laughs> Bad. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so thank you for comments, everybody. Mm. Uh, appreciate it, of course. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, I am going to now uh, tell you about things that you already know that you, uh, if you're new, you don't know about, potentially. Um, but, uh, I I here we go. It's, it's, it's shill talk. Wow! Um, mm. are you with money? Do you have cash? That crazy you want that. to give to us? That you could, in fact, <laughs> donate to us every month if you would like to, and if you're uh, able to and not uh, feel like it's an obligation, well, you can join the Patreon or the Kofi. Uh, both of them, you can donate to us. Uh, both of them give the exact same tiers of rewards. Um, and uh, you get the, the shoutouts and stuff, of course. Mm. Um. So, of course, shouting out our thank yous to our tier fours, giving us those 15 bucks every fucking month, like crazy people. Uh, yep. That being Dranko Kraken, Mog Zero, Rick, aka Unit Rico, Slazer, and Steely. Big thank you to all of you for continuing to put up with all this bullshit and mm. giving us money for it. Yes. <laughs> That's silly. Um, and a thank you, of course, to Crimson Rose Armok, aka Lux, for that $5 in that tier two. Appreciate it, of course. Uh, and a thank you, of course, goes out to our tier one contributor for that dollar every single month. Mm -hmm. uh, all of you uh, uh, are insane, and we thank you for it. Um, mm -hmm. Immensely, of course. Come on. Oh, my God. And uh, if you would like to join for as little, little, a, as, little as a dollar a month, you can. Mm -hmm. Uh, links in the description for the Patreon and the Kofi. Um, one time, do time donations can also be done through the Kofi. So if you don't want to have a membership, you can just do it one time, uh, if you want. Um, and uh, of course, other ways being, um, you can go over to uh, T Public, buying the logo on whatever you want, uh, over there. Um, pretty uh good quality for most of the stuff um as i've said before the posters uh leave it leaves a bit to be desired but i think that's more of the quality of the actual uh design itself having a few uh splotches here and there that were not able to be seen in a smaller view um mm -hmm. than it was the actual posters themselves uh for uh t public so don't get a big poster uh, get everything else because it's smaller and it looks better. <laughs> um, and uh, other than that, of course, going over to our website, you can get our custom dice through there for 15 bucks, as well as find all these other links to all the things that I have already talked about and will talk about in a second. Um, but yeah, our custom dice are out there. I still have all 99 sets that are available to you, the people out there mm -hmm. uh, behind me uh, on my shelf. All the people that are behind you. All the people that are behind me, uh, as well as the dice for those people. So you better be giving me the money, otherwise you'll steal them from me, and I'll be very sad. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, of course, last but not least, you can go over to Humble Bundle using our link in the description, and anything you buy through there using the link will support both us as well as Tabletop Alliance, who is linked in the description for you to find out more about their charity work. Uh, that they do with tabletop uh, stuff. And mm -hmm. um, right now, uh, I mean, you can go over there and buy Helldivers 2 through there with the Super Citizen Edition for 60 bucks. That doesn't seem that bad. That actually seems mm. pretty good. Otherwise, mm -hmm. buying it for 40 bucks is also real good. Yeah. Um, and uh, ooh, what's this? Humble Heroines Action Adventure and Intrigue. What you got here? 
Uh, Eastward, Lisa, Wanted Dead, Metal Hellsinger, Plague Tale, St Scars Above, Corvus. I I don't know most of those. Um, <laughs> but the Dungeon Crawl Classics and Mutant Crawl Classics Mega Bundle 2 is here. Oh, nice. there you go. What's this? Uh, 40 bucks for 80 things? Yeah. Wow. That's real good. Because it's that's a that's a thing for fifty cents a piece. Yeah, it's two different games all together. That's great. Um, together I, at last. I actually might get this myself. Um, in a second. So don't yeah. you have enough games? This is for more TTRPGs though. Oh, okay. it's fine. I do have too many games though as well. Yes. Yes. Uh, also, I see there's Spawn. Um. That is comic bundle that you can get some Spawn comics. That's pretty cool. Ooh. Uh, I like Spawn. Spawn is yeah. pretty sick. Um, so if you're interested in Spawn, there's some of that. Yeah. Um, and there's the Dune Adventures tabletop RPG. Whoa! We were just talking about Mad Max style fucking things. <laughs> we were, but these have big giant worms. Yeah. Um. So yeah, there's that as well. Man, they got a lot of TTRPG stuff this time around, eh? Um, mm. so go check that stuff out. Um, otherwise, uh, check out the stuff in the store itself, as well as the choice bundle, which I'll be honest, this time the choice bundle doesn't look uh, too good. One well, of the games that I'm going to be getting is Saints Row, the new oof. one. Ooh, um, don't, don't play it. I'm not going to install that. It's just going to stay in my keys forever, I guess. That's good. Yeah. Um, the other one being Realms of Ruin, the Warhammer Age of Sigmar one, which I have not heard anything about. So I don't uh, know. You play as Stormcast Eternals. Which yeah, is but cool. Stormcast Eternals are kind of cringe. They are kind of <laughs> cringe. <laughs> um, Neo 2, though, sounds interesting. Uh, other ones I don't know anything about, so those ones are probably ones that I would actually play. <laughs> um, but yeah... Uh, so, but other than that, I mean, the other choice bundles that I've gotten in the past have been pretty fucking good. So, you know, mm. um, they, they have a couple of things. Like, I got Amnesia Rebirth through one of the bundles, the choice bundles. Let's be fair. Like, sometimes they just say, that's a popular thing. Let's put it in there. Okay. Yeah. And it's not all winners. But a lot of them, a lot of these indie games that I get, though, a lot of those are really, really good. Let me, mm -hmm. let me be clear. Um, anyway. You get to choose though when you when you actually join these things. I think you get to choose three out of them now, since the legacy thing is only for people like me who just subscribe to it way the fuck back, <laughs> <laughs> who get all of them. Um. Anyway. Uh. So yeah, that's all the ways that you can support. Um. As well as my shilling of humble bundle, really hard as usual because I love that site so much. Yes. Um the great show guys thank you mm. um i'm not even sure how i managed to typo guy into buy hey it's fine i got what you meant <laughs> um also i almost left this and let this entire nature episode pass without mentioning veridi unacceptable that's true <laughs> glad you got there in the end mm. uh tournament arc is going to be nuts i'm i'm looking forward to that timothy i i'm looking forward to that um anyway thank you all once again for joining us for the evening um yes. And uh, those of you who are watching the VOD, of course, uh, when it comes out on Monday, thank you as well. Um, make sure to do all the things. You know the things. You know the YouTube things. Yeah. Fucking, you know. I don't need to tell you. You know. Well, if you say it, it lights up with a little rainbow. So you does probably it actually? still should. It yeah. does. Oh, okay. Uh, subscribe. Say, just be sure you say it clearly. Try it again because I interrupted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So make sure you're looking at the subscribe button, everybody. Um, subscribe. Did it work? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not looking at it. <laughs> I, I, I'm not either. Uh, <laughs> I've seen it in other people's videos when they say subscribe or oh, like. Oh, cool. They get like rainbowy. Oh, neat. Okay. So it might not be for this. It might be for the VOD. Oh, okay. So subscribe. And obviously everybody who watches the VOD stays till the very end. The very obviously. end. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it yeah. never peaks at like two minutes and then just drops yeah no, no, no. <laughs> never 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 i've never seen yeah, that no. in the analytics every time mm. um <laughs> i'm looking and it's not doing anything hey I, 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 oh well um it might be just for the vod if it is just for the vod that makes sense because the bot is actually like looking for words 
and doing the yes. auto caption thing. So it's probably that. Ugh. Um, otherwise, I mean, you know, the YouTube things, um, do whatever you want to do. I'm not your dad. So we'll see you next week, everybody. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out. Goodbye. Bye.